Hello and good morning to you and welcome to Sewing Street. Uh, my name is Debbie Shaw and I'm going to be with you here live for the next four hours. I'm not going to be alone, so coming up in the next hour and the 11 o'clock hour, oh, in the next hour we've got a brand new embellishing machine which has, what has created this amazing frieze behind me here. And uh, Jane's from uh, Ellen's going to be here with us as well and in the 11 o'clock show. So if you've got the 680 machine or the 780 machine or you're thinking about buying them, then do come through at 11 o'clock and we'll have a chat about those. However, Ah, welcome to Sing Street. Every morning at 8 o'clock, for those of you that get up nice and early with us, we bring you a special offer. This is our early bird, we call it, and it's a reduced price item or items for the duration of the day or until stock sells out. Or occasionally, because we've got thousands of stocks and we carry things over from the day before. Oh, more about that later. However, today's early bird special are friction pens. Now, I use friction pens a lot. If you've ever seen any of my demos, you've probably seen that. Um, they're not actually designed for fabric, so I shall explain why shortly. Um, these are a heat erasable ink pen, and the reason I like to use them is because they're quick. I like water erasable, no problem with those whatsoever, but you've got to wet your work. I like air erasable, N nothing wrong with those, but you have to wait a certain amount of time for the ink to actually disappear. With heat erasable, they will disappear as soon as you put the iron on them, but be warned they will disappear if you're doing something like smocking and you've got lots of work going through your hands. The friction and the heat from your hand will help them to disappear. If you leave them in sunshine, they will disappear, and if they get very cold, they may come back again which is why we suggest that any kind of project that you're using friction pens on, you do a patch test first of all. So I normally use these within a seam allowance on or, or on areas where you're not going to see the ink. If I'm putting darts into a dress pattern, for instance, then I'm not going to use a friction pen because those markings may well be seen on the outside of the fabric and I don't want them coming back one day. If it's markings within the seam allowance, so if I'm putting notches and things like that, then that's not a problem at all because it's within the seam allowance. I don't mind whether the ink's there or the ink's not. But this is the way that they work. So if I just get myself a little ironing pad, Lots of you checking out on these already. Oh, I'll tell you about the price. £11.96 is a saving of £3 off the usual price. That's a big saving. That's almost your postage. So we have the green. So we try and bring you something that will work on most colours of fabric. We have the dark blue. <laughs> I could flog this on eBay, couldn't I? Um, we have black and we have the red. So something, if I'm working on red fabric, I'm not going to use red, so it's nice to have a black. And if I'm working on blue fabric, then I'm not going to use blue, so I'll use the black or the green. So you've, you've got a colour for everything. Um, these aren't just for fabric, by the way. They're, they are designed to work with paper. I'll show you that shortly. But the way that I use them on fabric is... I use it, I'll use the markings, and then when I don't want it there anymore, I simply iron them away. It's like a magic trick. Don't draw on this while it's still warm because your ink's not going to stay. It'll fade straight away because that's still warm. And again, just do be aware that if you're doing a lot of handwork with your fabric, that's going to cause heat, that's going to cause friction, and that is going to make the ink disappear. On the other hand, and if you're using these for paper, don't go writing checks with them, mind you. On the bottom of the pen is an eraser, which again will cause friction, it's all about the heat. So you can literally rub this away. So again, for, for fabric I would use my iron, on paper then you can just use this. If you're pattern making, that's another time I use these a lot, if I'm designing a pattern, um, I'll maybe sketch it out in the black first of all very roughly and then I can adjust and I can take away the lines that were there originally and then I can fold in half or use my light box and make things symmetrical and the original lines which are sketch lines I can then simply erase so the outline of my pattern is exactly how I want it to be. If I'm drawing round a template um, onto paper, maybe you're enlarging patterns, it's quite nice to use a friction pen because again if you go, if you go off and you, you make a, a line that's not necessary you can simply erase it and you can be very precise with these on paper as well. Um, a quarter of the stock of these is now sold out. Let's have another look. Now that's cooled down at the way that they work. 
So I could be marking up notches on a dress pattern. Again, within the seam allowance, absolutely fine. So if, I've, if I need notches here, I can just put my little marks wherever they need to be. Or if I'm um, making pattern pieces, if I'm making a twirl, that's great because this could be the front. I don't want that there all the time, but to identify the different pieces, that's going to be ideal. If you're marking out a seam allowance, that could be my five eighths of an inch seam allowance. That's right on the stitch line. So I don't want to see those marks. I, don't, I can't be bothered to do tacking stitches. So all I'm going to do is to draw them out with my friction pen and then simply they disappear. If you're marking onto any kind of fabric that has a pile or you don't want to squish, then you can actually make your markings and use the steam from your iron to make these disappear. So you don't have to touch your fabric with the iron if your fabric isn't the kind of fabric that you would want to touch with, iron, with an iron. So again, you can make some really quite striking marks. If you're matching up panels, if you're bag making, if you're dress making, and again, in the seams, please, always do a little patch test on a spare piece of fabric first. If I'm making a quilt and I want to do, um, draw my lines on there for embroidering over, I wouldn't use, I wouldn't use this. Um, but if I'm making things like whole square triangles, so you've got your, um, your square and you're going to make a seam line down the center here to sew a quarter of an inch either side, absolutely you can use your friction pen. And four colors again means that you've got a color that should stand out, unless it's black, that will stand out against any color of fabric. So just one more time, because this is loads of fun. If you've not used these before, you're gonna be doing that. You'll be wasting half your ink, just drawing onto fabric and then making it disappear. I remember when I first got mine, I said to myself, watch this. And I did the whole cell on him. I did this, so there's your markings, and there's that, and here's the iron, and oh yeah, it's gone. <laughs> That's a bit of fluff. But do test, I can just vaguely see a few lines on here. So I don't want to mislead you. Don't choose these on, um, on areas where you're going to actually see the ink unless you're very confident that that's going to be covered up with stitches. So four pence for £11.96. So now you've placed your order. Well done. Um, that means now that anything else you order for the whole of the rest of the day is postage free. So we have three ninety five postage. It does say all day on your screen. And that means that if you come back to us and order anything else from any other show, we don't charge any extra postage. That means that if you order anything else off our website, even after the live show, so all the way through to midnight tonight, you don't pay any extra postage. And you may not have realized that we are part of Jewelry Maker. So when you go to our website, sewingstreet.com, you, you will be taken to Jewelry Maker's homepage. If you order anything from Jewelry Maker, after ordering from Sewing Street, that is postage free as well because we're all under the same roof. So that is a great deal. I don't know of any other shopping channel that offers you something like that. It's like free PMP all day after that one purchase. So well done for getting hold of your friction pens. They, I think you're gonna love them. I, I do mine, I, I use mine practically every day. Wouldn't be without them. Now then, early birds only last for a day. If there's anything left by uh, midnight, we put the price up. Somebody's in trouble. This is the early bird that we brought you yesterday. Um, we are keeping the price down because we've got so much stock basically. So why shouldn't everybody be able to take advantage? You are going to be able to invest in 50 fabric clips for £9.99. 50. That is such good value for me. Thousands of you already ordered yesterday. Well done to you. If you haven't seen these before, and that's what you're getting. These are like um, a replacement for pins. So if you have fabric that you can't pin, like laminate fabric, if you have fabric that is very tough to pin, like, um, I don't know, leather or faux leather or thick heavy canvas or uh, really strong denim, you clip instead of pins. It couldn't be easier, but these have so much more use. A lot of the time when you see, um, well, we've got Clever Wonder Clips on the website, okay? They're £28.99 for the same amount that you get here. And you normally find, um, a, well, a lot of people will buy a brand because you know that when you have a brand name, you have quality. So it's the same with the sewing machine, it's the same with the lawnmower. Um, a lot of, in fact, a lot of salespeople will say, don't go for Billy No Mates. 
go for something with a brand. Go for a YKK zip, not the one that doesn't have any branding with it because you know you've got the quality. So it is a bit concerning when you see a pack of clips that are a third of the price of our branded clips because the first thing you're going to think is they're cheap. You're not going to get the quality. They won't be as strong. Do you know, there's been so much research that's actually gone into these clips to make sure that we have the best quality for you. Um, and, you know, if we brought you cheap clips and you got these home and you broke them, and then you'd send them back, you'd never shop from us again, you wouldn't trust us, would you? These clips are really strong. Yeah, all we'd end up is a whole, we've got, we've got thousands of them. We'd have a warehouse full of broken clips because we don't throw anything away. You know, <laughs> you know, when you say we have scrappy bags for you, we'd have broken clip bags. Don't know what you're going to do with them. Um, but no, we don't want that. We don't want them back again. We don't want them to break. We want you to enjoy your purchase. So it's, <laughs> we don't want lots of bit of broken plastic. We don't want these thrown away because that's not very ethical these days either, is it? So a nice, strong clip. So the way that they work, they have a flat bottom, you know the feeling, and a curved top. And that means that as you're sewing, so if this is along the edge of your fabric, let me just get a piece of fabric. You're clipping your fabric together, the flat side will go on the bottom, the curved side on the top. And then as you approach your sewing machine, then you know it's upside down you know you've got um there you go. it's nice and flat as it goes under the machine it's not curved as they are curved on the top that means if you're sewing over binding or cording or piping it will accommodate without squishing the beauty of these clips i think they're really grippy is for thicker fabrics which if I just roll this up a little bit, it becomes a thicker piece of fabric. So that may be a heavy weight of fabric that I can't actually physically get a pin through. I may be gluing something. I do that an awful lot as well. If I'm making something like a bag handle, see how thick that is and how much they clip? Let me just have a look at... The only way I could pin something that thick is like that and that's, that's not ideal, is it? I've got a big curve there. I don't know what I'm making, but if that, was, if that was a bag handle with padding inside it, I'm not going to be able to hold that flat and I wouldn't be able to get that under the sewing machine. But with the Eclipse, you, you can do. So if I've got a strap and I'm folding that up and there's a D-ring there and I want to glue it, I can't pin it in place, I can't hold it, but I can put just a couple of clips either side while the glue dries. They're, they're really useful. So 50 for 9.99 is fantastic value for money, is it not? Would you like more? Well, how about going for 100? Because if you go for a pack of 100, you get twice as many, but you don't pay twice the price. So for 100 clips, that's two bags, £17.98. It should be 19 98 should it not? So that's taken a couple of pounds off the price if you, if you go for the 100. And, do you know, out of all of the offers that we have, I think this one is going to be the most useful. Sometimes 50 just isn't enough. I think 100 is a really good amount. However, maybe you're binding a whole quilt, maybe you are taking workshops, um, teaching people how to sew, you're stocking up. We're taking workshops at the moment, maybe we're Zooming a lot. Um, but when we do get to the stage where we can, maybe this is for a whole class. Or if you're not the only one that sews and you've seen the value for money that you're getting here, why not go for 150? So I shan't take them all out. You will get 50 all separately packaged as well. They'll come in three packets. So my suggestion is if you only want 50, but you've got a couple of mates, give them a ring now and say, how do you fancy splitting the cost of these into three? Because then instead of £9.99, you're going to be paying um, £9.99, that would work out about £8 each just under eight pounds per pack. So you're going to save a couple of pounds per pack if you order the 150, they work out at 15 pence per clip. So that's the most affordable way to go. Um, or if you're prone to losing things or leaving them behind, leave a couple in, leave a couple in the packets. Now the clover clips that we bring you again, not knocking them, I've got loads of them at home. I love Clover products and I know that they're going to be quality. Um, you'll pay more than your £23.97. The bonuses with the Clover ones, same kind of quality, same kind of look, same kind of usage. They come in a little plastic box. These come in a plastic bag. That actually takes the price down an awful lot. And I don't personally use the plastic box. I keep them all in a huge teacup. It's actually... Um, 
Um, it's a plant pot, a bright yellow thing. You might have seen it behind me if you've seen in, in any of my videos. So it's a bright pink plant pot with a saucer and I stick them, <clears throat> stick them all in there. On, the, on my box that I have with me on all occasions, I clip them around the top of the drawer so I know they're there. I've got a few um, pincushion, mannequin, mannequin shaped pincushions at home that are in little buckets and I clip them all around the top of the bucket. So wherever I am, I know I've got some clips to hand somewhere or other. Um, so for, you can dress make with them. You can use them to hold pieces of fabric together. If it's very delicate, I wouldn't, I would pin in the seam allowance. If it's thicker fabrics, definitely. If it's a fabric that you can't pin, like a lot of PUs or faux leathers or laminated fabric where pinning will leave a hole and actually it can be very difficult to actually force a pin in, then your, your clips are going to be ideal. Anything that you're gluing, even if you're gluing ears onto a toy, uh, I don't glue ears onto it at all. I'll sew and then drizzle glue around the back of the ear to make sure the stitches don't come undone. And I do the same with buttons. If I'm using buttons for toy eyes, I'll sew glue around the back. Then you can clip the button over the top, clip the ear in place um, as the glue is drying. The, the, the number of times if you're gluing and you pop a little bit of glue on something, then you hold it. Because when you let it go, it starts, you know, I've got to hold it. It's not quite there. I've got, not got the purchase yet. Just got to hold it a bit longer. Let the clips do the work for you. Go and do something more interesting. So three offers for you there for £23.97. Um, if you'd like to get in touch this morning, that would be nice to hear from you. You've got a couple of ways of doing that. So you can either message our studio via email, which is sewing, uh, studio at sewingstreet.com. Come on, let us know the most unusual thing you've used your clips for. Is it for, oh, we, we, had, we had a lockdown fringe clipper the other day. <laughs> That's something I wouldn't have thought of doing. Um, you can send a message on Facebook if you wish as well, which is Sewing Street TV. We do have a Sewing Street fans page as well. But if you want to leave a message for the studio, please could you go to the Sewing Street website. Right, maybe you're going to be clipping, I don't know, the... Are you growing plants and you want to clip the ties to a bean pole? I don't know. Can we let what you've done? Um, my three-year-old granddaughter would just enjoy putting them into colour options. Those are the blue, those are the purple. Make a game out of them. Okay. We have a book launch in just a second. Um, we're going to be looking at embroidery. We'll give you more detail of that later on, but it is exclusive to Sewing Street in the UK. So that's, um, that's coming up at nine o'clock, but we can give you a little sneaky tease of botanical embroidery with iron-on transfers to make it easy as well. So I'm not, I'm not giving you, I'm not doing this, no, it's coming up at nine o'clock. But if you want to get ahead of the game, have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. Um, or you can just give us a ring. It's a free phone number on 0800 001 4433 and say, I'd like that book. It's not available at the moment anywhere else in the UK apart from here right now on Sewing Street. Anyway, more of that later. Um, we've got a brand new machine coming up in the next hour as well. Can I kind of show you? Shall I show you? Well, have a look at this to start with. You may have seen um, Delphine Brooks felting shows where she felts by hand. This is machine felting. So you can go quicker, you can go larger. Look at the kinds of things that you can make. You're basically making your own fabric. So you could be using um, roving yarn as this is. You can use wool tops, um, same kind of thing, all machine sewn. You can embellish um, cardigans and scarves, so things that you already have. So you don't have to start making things from scratch. This one's actually on the Janome website as a project. You can be making table runners. This is such an amazing way of using up your scraps, scrap fabrics, scrap ribbons, um, scrap pieces of lace. Um, have you ever bought any of those... Um, a shredded like sari fabric, the silks, and they come in a big bundle and wondered what on earth to do with them. Those tiny little shards of, uh, of fabric that you're just slicing off to, to square up your quarter square triangles. Um, you can use those, any kind of little tiny bits of fabric, particularly if it's um, a natural fabric like cottons and wools, you can now felt it and create fabric of your very own. This is very achievable for you. So this is coming up in the 10 o'clock show. Um, but again, if you want to have a look on our website on Sewing Street, sorry, nine o'clock this one. Oh, you'd have missed it then, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> um, do come and take a look at the show at nine o'clock. I feel like I'm in one of those boxing matches in between the rounds. Oh, we've got brand new Liberty Fabrics. Oh, look at these. So, I like the, well, I, I do, I love Liberty Fabrics, but these are very different, I think. They're not instantly recognisable as Liberty, but you know, you've got that quality. We have got tiny teacups, tiny little um, uh, teapots and sugar bowls and flowers, brand new for you today. And these are absolutely stunning. They're 112 centimetres wide and half a metre in length and by the half metre. So if you want to make it, oh, that's a good price, isn't it? If you want to make a dress out of this, then just order more than one unit and they'll all come in one piece. So if you need a three and a half metres, then you're going to order seven units at just £5.49. What an amazing idea. Little tiny teaspoons. So if you're doing um, a little bit of patchwork and it's smaller pieces that you're using, if you're English paper piecing and your paper pieces are half inch hexagons, or oh, good luck with that one, um, you have a print that is going to be small enough. Actually, that goes really well with my cow creamers, doesn't it? Oh, now, oh. That goes well. Oh, I like that. Oh, so instead of using a grey for my sashing, I could have used the green. That, that works really well. Oh, these are coming up later on as well. That's in the 10 o'clock show. And oh, look. Oh, where's my floral one? These have all got names, but I can't remember what they are. So they all go, look. Oh, that's nice. Anyway, that's being a little indulgent, isn't it? That's coming up later. So just to show you what your half a metre looks like, They're all the same size. Brand new today. Lots of people had beat you to it this morning um, and ordered before the show started. So as soon as these girls are, it's anything new, isn't it? We love something new and this is brand new to us today as well. But that is so pretty. The colours are so fresh. <laughs> We've only got 10 metres left. Oh dear. So if you're redecorating your kitchen, and, uh, and you need 10 metres of fabric, go order 20 units now and you can have the lot and you'll have it all in one piece as well. Oh, right. oh you could be, anything for the kitchen, couldn't you? You could be making um, tray covers. Um, it could be your tea cosies and your coffee covers, your cafetiere covers and your mug hugs and your, your mug rugs. Oh, what would look lovely if you've got a classic um, dresser and maybe make a scalloped kind of, shelf cover for them that would be nice a little bit of lace around them that'd be pretty as well wouldn't it i'd have nice bright white lace or maybe a blue maybe a pink oh even the cups and everything got tied oh that's looks like paw prints i think it's flowers um but the detail on them is um, i sort of put my head right the detail's amazing you should you should look that close <laughs> But when you see, again, tiny, tiny little flowers. Oh, these are Liberty fabrics, so you expect that quality. Um, and it's, um, when you're looking at a quality fabric, it's about the quality of the threads that are used. These will be long strand um, cotton threads. It's about the tightness of the weave, which gives you a real smooth handle to the fabric. And it's about the quality of the print as well. Now you expect all of that with Liberty. It's a quilting weight cotton. Um, so it's not as fine as a poplin. It doesn't have the drape of a poplin, but you can still use this if you're making something, if you're dressmaking, you want something a little bit more crisp. So if you wanted a fabric that has a really beautiful flow, then I wouldn't go for this for dressmaking. But if you're making um, a circle skirt or a, um, a, a shirt or a blouse or um, a shift dress, those kind of things, I think this fabric is absolutely perfect. Um, only got 10 meters of this one remaining now though, so um, I was going to go check out your basket. We have more. So this one is called Flower Tops. Another one that's brand new today. Colour wise, same collection. So you know that the colours are going to match together perfectly. So that really pretty mint green carries on through both of the fabrics. But doesn't it, doesn't it start? Let me turn that around because we have, it is directional. We've got strawberries 
and I'm sure I saw a toadstool, might have been a strawberry. But tiny little seeds, little dots, oh, I've got my head in the way again, haven't I? Um, <laughs> there we go, there's a toadstool. So pretty, and there's so much going on. It's like looking into a magical garden, isn't it? The enchanted garden. Beautiful flowers. We've got little star shapes in here as well. A very delicate selection of, um, of colours have been chosen too. But again, it goes beautifully together. Because you, you'd never buy just one fabric, would you? So a really busy pattern like this, I'd go for something a little bit plainer, but maybe not completely plain. So how about going for hearts? So that's mini teacups. So this one's candy hearts. They just go so well together. Oh, 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 coming up later. Um, simple, something that you could use as an accent, maybe as um, a sashing, as uh, for borders. Something that when you've got something that is busier, really makes the fabric stand out. Give it an outline, give it a, give it a nice border. Um, but that is so pretty. I'm imagining little girls' dresses and skirts and aprons, or if you want to really stretch your fabric, then go for um, a, a plain fabric for, say, a penny, and then have a, a hot um, pocket on the front of it. Or use it for binding, or use it for frills and pleats and gathers around things. So you don't, you know, £5.49 for half a metre is an incredibly good price for Liberty. Um, but if you just wanted to make that go even further and just use this for accents and for special, for special projects. Oh, imagine a teddy bear made out of this. You'd be able to make a few, wouldn't you? That happy. Liberty Teddy. Go into Liberty and buy a teddy bear, but it's going to be more than £5.49. <laughs> so again, it's um, half a metre in length by the half metre, so order more than one, it comes in one piece, and it's 112 metres wide. How about a bit of a tea party? Cupcakes are always in vogue, aren't they? But we've got, oh, jammy dodgers. Or is that a jammy dodge? That's jam, oh, I don't know. Oh, a jam, oh, Hannah Producer is an expert on biscuits. <laughs> so is that a jam ring and that's a jammy dodger? Okay, we've got little cherries, we've got pink wafers there as well. And little cupcakes with cherries on the top. Oh, that is so pretty. <laughs> so you made your teddy bear out of the hearts and then maybe teddy bear clothes can be made out of your, um, your cupcakes and biscuits. <laughs> that would be a very posh teddy bear. We, we do like upmarket teddy bears on the sewing street. Um, and then you know, £5.49 for Liberty Fabric is absolutely amazing. You can make lots of small projects. You know, if you're making things for... Um, for gifts, I'm just thinking if you had um, maybe little pouches of something nice and sweet smelling to, to fragrance your kitchen, or just little gifts, um, pin cushions for somebody who sews and that kind of thing. I would tell you what I would do. I would go online and go to Liberty's website and maybe look for a little bit of information about them, or I'm sure they wouldn't mind if you printed off their logo. And I would put this in a box um, with a little bit of tissue paper wrapped around it and then a little bit of information about Liberty, just so that you know, uh, or the person who you're going to give this to knows that that's Liberty fabric. So imagine a lovely, a cupcake pincushion. Couldn't, couldn't be better for a, for a sewer. So make your own little pink cushion and then have, just have a little bit of information and put it in a lovely box. That's a few pink cushions you're going to be making, but that's probably every sewing friend sorted for Christmas this year. Again, that's £5.49. Then, this is um, tiny, tiny flowers, but it's quite... Well, it's very subtle. So this is one of those fabrics that if you're going to mix it with something very bold, it's not going to argue, it will flatter. This is a completely different range, but it, it just goes so well because it's, it's the plain. You know, it's the, it has more interest than a plain white or a plain gray, but it's not going to argue with any heavily patterned fabrics that you have. So that's very subtle. Mm. Mm. Oh, go on then, because they do go together so well, don't they? So this is Budding Blossom with the tiny grey ditzy flowers which pick up on the same design and the same colour in the first one that you saw there. Oh, and we've got the greens. 
perfect colours. Now we don't have a mega bundle for these like we often do with Liberties. That just goes so, oh, those two together. Um, so when they're gone, they're gone. That, that will be it. That will be the end of our stock, which is a bit of a shame, isn't it? But they are new to us today, so it's nice to have a little bit of newness on the show. Um, so that is budding blossom. A lot of these are now down to single figures. So really busy this morning. Should we have a look at some little leaves? This is another one of those um, calm prints that doesn't like to argue. So it's, it's quite happy, this garden trail fabric, to take a back seat against cupcakes. Would that go? Oh, that would make a nice trim, wouldn't it? So if you're making a pocket out of the hearts, maybe have the garden, the, have the garden trail across the top. It's a really lovely dusty pink. Oh, that'd make a nice blouse, wouldn't it? I'd kind of like that. With maybe a collar in something a little bit brighter. That'd be nice. But again, if you order by the half metre, as in I'm going to make a little girl's dress, so I need a metre of this, then order two units and it'll come in one piece. But it's it'd be lovely fabric to wear. And then we say it's quilter's weight cotton. Um, quilter's weight cotton is a little bit heavier than poplin. Certainly heavier than lawn, um, but it's got a reasonably loose weave because a lot of quilters like to sew by hand and it allows the needle to pass through freely. Um, so that's what quilter's cotton is, but it's not see-through and it's not coarse. It's incredibly soft. That's the quality of Liberty. Um, and you're not going to need a lining for this for the most part either, if it's dressmaking. So although we call it quilter's cotton, it's not just for quilting. It's for home wares, it's for trims, it's for binding. It can make a, oh, it can make a lovely set of cushion covers with these. I'm imagining with um, a flange around there in a contrasting colour or maybe a little bit of a plique on the front because again it's something that adds a little bit more interest than just that plain white. So if you have, just, just saying, you know, just putting it out there. I put grey around here which in retrospect looks a little bit dull compared to the two in a garden trail. Hmm. I might, I might do a bit of binding that would be nice wouldn't it should we do that i think we should so again five pounds 49 and then finally with our liberties is the heart bouquet you have to look closely at this and i, I kind of like that um because the flowers are hearts see that's why it's called heart bouquet funny that um with tiny stems and little tiny leaves, non-directional fabric again, so you really can make the most of this. Um, if you're making, um, I don't know, doll's clothes or teddy clothes or smaller pieces of patchwork, then you're not going to lose the design even when you cut tiny. I mean, even if you're covering a small button, you still get the whole of the design in the centre of it. So that's Heart Bouquet at £5.49. Right, we'll, we'll keep you updated with stock. So that's our whole new selection. And it's really busy for those. Got a new book coming up later. Do you want to have a quick look at that? Exclusive launch to us here in the UK. We don't have the author because he's in Illinois, but he might be watching. Hi. Um, that's, <laughs> hi, Brian. If you, we've got your book. Mind you, they're five hours behind over there, aren't they? So it might not be up yet. But you can, you can watch it on YouTube later. Um, it, this is a book that's in a folder because it actually has um, transfers as well. So let's have a quick flick through Designs and Insects. And these are, they're, they're all hand-drawn by Brian. And I, I like that. He particularly likes bees. They're his favourite insect. But I like the hand-drawn look. And these are the actual transfer. Well, not this. This is the same as the, um, the transfers that you're going to be able to use, but they're an awful lot bigger. Um, there's a stitch guide as well. So a, a lot of us um, started our sewing journey with um, hand sewing like this. I know I did, but it was cross on, it was on Ada, so it was on cross stitch fabric. Um, but if you haven't hand embroidered for a while, this is a nice little reminder of the stitches that are used most of all. So for instance, with the bumblebee, you're going to use a stab stitch and you're going to use a back stitch and you're going to use um, French knots for, for their eyes. Might have a go at that later if we've got time. And then instructions on how to make up things like the table runner. So it's not just about the embroidery, it's how to make up projects using the embroidery as well. Some of these you don't even need a hoop for. But we'll have a look at that later on. Lots of ideas in here as well, so it's a book full of inspiration. 
Um, and again, full size transfers in there as well. So that, that's later anyway. Have a look on the website. Um, oh, we have a whole selection of May Morris fabrics. These are all on the website. Right, so some of these are back in stock. You may have seen them before. Um, we might not be able to get hold of them again. And the stock that we do have, oh, we have to fight for these. Um, so this one particularly are back in stock. It was really, really popular last time, sold out very, very quickly. It's one of the most striking designs in the whole range and it's only seven pounds 49 per half meter. Um, this is probably one of the most famous pieces of May Morris's work. And it is absolutely striking. There's um, a wallpaper equivalent of this one. Um, block print wallpaper, which is absolutely beautiful. But again, just like with the Liberty, you've got a quality of fabric, you've got a quality of print, you've got a quality of, um, of threads that are used as well. So you've got the softness, you've got the drape. It's made by Moda, produced in association with the V&A. So have a look at the rest of the range. We've, we've got lots of backs in stocks, all coming up on the website on sewingstreet.com. So I haven't got time to go through all of those now, but um, if, we, if we have time later on, we'll have another quick look through the Made a right mess of those now, haven't they? They were so neatly laid out, and now they're not. So have a look on sewingstreet.com, or come and ask the question. Drop us an email, so I want a reminder of that. Do you see that, that red fabric with the gold? I want to see that close up, because we can accommodate. We do things like that. Right, <clears throat> we have gift sets. So, oh, let's have a look at these as well. These trays are really useful. Um, a lot of us like to craft on our knees. A lot of us don't have much choice. We sit down all the time. Um, and if you're crafting on your dinner tray, then um, it's going to slip around a little bit. These trays have a bean bag underneath them, so they mould around your knees. So less chance of it slipping, less chance of it moving when you've got this really comfortable bean bag. Um, not just for crafting. This could work. Are you having your tea on your knee? This is fabric that's covered or a print that's covered with a plastic sheet, so it's wipe clean as well. So if you like a cup of tea as you sat down, um, maybe you aren't very mobile and you spend most of your time in a wheelchair. My mum was disabled, um, so I know all about things like that. It's nice to have things on your knee that aren't going to fall around. Um, so if you're doing a little bit of hand sewing or painting or embroidery, or again, if you just want to put your cup of tea somewhere right on your knee, this moulds around your knee and it'll stay flat. So you've got less chance of spilling things than you would do um, if, it was, um, if it was just on a tray. Maybe you're sitting up in bed. Um, this is £27.99. This is, this is for our benefit, by the way. So those, those do come off. <laughs> We're not going to ruin your William Morris design by having sticky labels on it. And it's not heavy, not heavy. So, okay, that's um, Strawberry Thief, probably one of the most iconic William Morris designs. We do have another option for you, which is Golden Lily, which is this one. Again, same, same idea. So you've got the beans in the back. That's just like a bean bag, so they've got polystyrene balls inside there. And what a lovely design. Do you know, I don't think it matters, the design. So I'm not thinking you've got to colour coordinate with the home, with your home deck. Um, these are just really, really useful trays, but if you do love the design and you love the colours, then, then why not treat yourself? Really useful. So, we have matching glasses cases. How's that? Oh, there we go. I don't know, I don't know what the fabric is for this, but it's so soft, it feels like peach skin. So it's very, it's very tactile. And you know, they're quite heavy. So in here, we, the glasses don't come with it, but just to show you the fit. And you've got a cleaning cloth as well. But to show you the quality of these, when I close this over, you get a nice strong spring. It's pattern matched. Isn't that amazing? 
But what a beautiful gift. It's only £11.99. Um, so not actually, that would make a nice, I was going to say it's not sewing related, but it kind of is, isn't it? Because you don't have to keep your glasses in it. What a great little repair kit. Um, so you can be keeping safety pins and a little bit of bond, uh, wonder web and some spare needles and threads in there. So if you're traveling anywhere, you know you've got your repair kit to hand. So uh, that would be a nice surprise, actually, if you're going to give a, a glasses case to somebody who doesn't wear glasses. They're going to open it and think, what? But you could actually put small bobbins and thread in there as well. That would make a real little pair of scissors. Make it a sewing box. I like that idea. So again, that's £11.99. That's Strawberry Thief. Or how about the lily? So same idea. So you've got the little cleaning cloth in there as well. I could keep my wonder clips in there, couldn't I? Could probably fit 50 in there. Or if you're doing a little bit of um, hand embroidery, I actually brought some smocking in with me today because um, I've got a, I've got a lot to do. But I could keep things like my little scissors and my spare threads in there. And um, yeah, I didn't bring it with me to do at work. Do you know, I just had a funny feeling. I've, I've got a feeling in my bones. I'm going to be stuck in horrendous traffic on the way home today. I don't know why. So I thought, yeah, I'm going to bring some sewing to do just in case. I don't know. I don't know why I feel like that. I don't know. Um, when we brought you these little gift sets previously, we have sold out. So let's take a look at Strawberry Thief, Strawberry Thief this one first. Inside here, you do have your manicure kit. You've got all of your bits for £8.99. So you've got your nail clippers and your cuticle trimmer and your tweezers and your little pair of curved scissors and Oh, oh, that's for trimming cuticles down, isn't it? So all of that in a velvet lined to go. Oh, I haven't finished yet. We've also got a nail file. Come out. There you go. Those scissors are specifically designed to remove nail files for £8.99. We are expecting a sellout on these today. So affordable gifts. I know we're only in August, but Christmas is creeping up. An affordable little gift to say happy Christmas, happy birthday. What about a thank you? Have you, been, have you put on somebody to do some alterations for you? Well, you could barely buy them a half decent bottle of wine for £8.99 these days. But this is something that is so useful and looks so much more expensive than £8.99. Have you got a secret Santa? Is your budget £10? Well, you've got a pound to make a birthday card there as well, haven't you? Christmas card with them. So that is your um, Strawberry Thief. We do have the Lily available for you as well. So you could go matching glasses case, can you? And again in here, really nice sturdy box. Now how much would you pay for nail scissors? How much are nail clippers? Well maybe only a pound. Um, but that'd be one, two, three, four. I reckon a couple of pounds for your scissors if not three ninety nine. All in the case and William Morris print for £8.99. That would make a really thoughtful gift for anybody, wouldn't it? Male or female, anybody in your family. And it's quite nice, isn't it, to have... We used to, do, we used to have manicure kits a lot when I was younger. I haven't seen anything quite like this for a while. Um, but it is quite nice to sit and pamper yourself. It's, it's one of the few things that in, in lockdown um, you can do yourself. So we wouldn't do a home hairdressing kit or a home massage kit, but just sitting there and trimming your own nails and filing and pushing back your cuticles. And it's quite a, a nice relaxing thing to do. Then again, that's £8.99. Well, now then, we've had a message. Um, the machine that's coming up in the next hour, by the way, which is um, the embellishing machine, uh, it's selling already, just to give you a warning. Um, just have a look at your messages on Facebook. Where are we? Community. Oh, it's all around the trees and houses to get to your messages on here. Hi, Sandra. Good morning. She says, morning, Debbie. I've just been told I'm going to be a granny again. Oh, congratulations. She says, you often talk about smocking and I've never done this. Any chance you could do a demo sometime or does one of your books cover it? Um, Sandra, I, I do Canadian smocking, which is, shall I show you? I'll show you what, where I'm at so far. Just bear with me a sec because it's in my bag down here that I wasn't expecting to show you. I'm coming, I'm coming all the way around here. 
and then I'm coming back again. So I don't do English smocking, which is the smocking that you're going to use on children's clothing. This is what I'm doing. So this is actually a bows design. And this is going to be eventually a rather large cushion cover. So that's the kind of smocking that I do. So these get squished down and pressed. So it actually looks like brickwork when you've done those. And then I'm going to pinch the middle of each one of those and make it into a tiny little bow. And I might put a pearl in the middle of each one of those as well. But that's the kind of smocking that I do. It's not, it's not dressmaking. It's, um, it's the big chunky stuff. So, but there are, oh, actually, I don't know if she's coming to Sewing Street, but we have had a chat. Um, Heather Flint, if you have a look on her website, I can't remember what it's called, but I'm sure if you put Heather Flint into a search engine, um, she does smocking patterns. And of course there is the smocking associate, can't remember. There's a lot of smocking out there, but that's unfortunately, oh, where have you gone? Not the one that I do. Right, is that, uh, is that everybody for this, this morning with name checks? Because I do like to say hello to, is Dawn there? So have we got, oh yes, Dawn's always there. Oh, oh lovely. Um, morning, Kirsty, and uh, morning again, Dawn. I'm going backwards. Morning, Angie from Great Yarmouth. Um, lovely, have we got Alan this morning? Not normally on a Thursday. I, I didn't know if we'd have a different crowd. So, I don't know why I'm here, I don't know. I don't do Thursdays, I don't know why I'm here. Um, somebody must be busy or ill or off or on holiday or something, I don't, I don't know. It's quite odd being here on a Thursday. That's probably why I brought the smocking, maybe Thursdays. Um, yes, it's, it's, it's a car, uh, <laughs> it's a traffic jam day. I don't, I don't know why I'm thinking that, I'm just feeling the traffic. Anyway, anyway, um, let's take a look at our genomic cutting map. Whatever kind of sewing you do, you will find a rotary cutter, a ruler and a mat absolutely invaluable. Um, the reason being accurate cutting, being able to cut perfect straight lines, whether that's cutting around a pattern, obviously not a curve unless you're very steady with your hands, you can cut around curves with these things. Um, but if you're, if you're patchworking, certainly you need a rotary cutter, ruler and mat. And then you probably need a whole load of templates as well. Um, but for cutting squares, rectangles, um, quarter stress, triangles, a 60 degree diamonds, you'll find this really, really useful. Um, I love the colour of this as well. It's very upmarket. So it's the second biggest cutting mat that we do. I would always recommend that you go for the biggest cutting mat you can possibly fit in your sewing area. This wasn't centimetres and inches on it. I don't tend to use centimetres very often personally. I'm an inches kind of girl, but occasionally you'll find a pattern that has centimetres that you'll need to use that for. Um, so it's nice to have the option of both. When you're storing these, try and store them flat. So this is, um, in fact, don't try and store them flat. Store them flat. Because if you get a bend in these, they're very difficult to get out again voice of experience but this is a, a, a decent enough size to be able to slip it underneath a sofa or underneath a bed if you need to put it away when you're not using it now with your rulers it's easy to have metric and imperial on each side of a cutting mat you can't do that with rulers because they're transparent and that would be very confusing however we've got metric and we have imperial rulers for you so a lot of quilters will use imperial, a lot of dressmakers will use um, metric. So although in, in Europe, particularly if you're using um, French patterns or quilting patterns, you're going to find those measurements in metric. So it's, it's, it's a bit odd here, isn't it? I was talking to um, a lady called Yasuko, um, who's in Japan, and she works for Clover, because I work quite closely with the Clover. And um, when, when I was talking to her, she said, well, why, why do you use inches and centimetres in England when all around Europe is centimetres and all over America is inches? It's because we're, we're <laughs> I was going to say we're multilingual, but um, we're, multi, we're multi-measuring. We can do both. Um, which I think is a little bit odd because you tend to, it's like 
thinking in two languages in a way, isn't it? Because we, always, we buy fabric by the metre, we sell fabric by the half metre, so that's all about the metric, but I'll buy my fabric by the half metre and then get it home and cut it into inches. And we just seem to cross over like that quite a lot. Um, but if you are buying any kind of patterns or instructions from Europe, you will find them in, in uh, metric because that's what they use. They don't even know what an inch is. And then in America or that side of the world, you're going to find these in... Um, in Imperial, which is a little bit odd. So basically, where I'm going with that one, we have two rulers for you. This is the 60 centimetre, so this is your metric. It's in five millimetre increments. These are 10 centimetre boxes. You have 45, 60 and 30 degree angles if you're going to be cutting something like your bias binding. We'll have a look at that in just a second. It would be really easy. So if you go for the ruler, and the mat, you're going to use the centimetre side of it. If you go for the, there we go, the imperial, this is your ruler in inches. So this is 24 inches by six inches. Um, it's in pink and in black. So you find that the colours stand out against most uh, fabrics as well. Um, and your numbers go from 1 to 24 that way and 1 to 24 that way. So you don't have to keep turning your rulers around when you're using them. You know, £12.99 for a quilting ruler is such a good price. This is the size that I use all the time. I'll use this, if, this size if I'm making... Um, if I'm cutting out to make a bag base square and I cut an inch out of the corner, I'll use this ruler because it's handy, it just happens to be there. Um, but if I wanted to cut equally well a four inch square, I can cut that. I can cut a six inch square simply by using the different areas on the ruler. If I wanted to cut bias binding, then I would probably to start with use the 45 degree mark on my... Um, oh, look at the mock in here. I'd use the 45 degree mark on my... Um, mat which is from there to there and then cut on the diagonally so I've got my, my bias cut and then maybe use the two inch mark on here so I don't need the, the markings on the mat anymore and then cut two inch strips just by moving the ruler across. Equally well you can use the ruler on its own by using the 45 degree line here across the fold or the raw edge, uh, the selvage edge of your fabric and cut your 45 degree mark in this direction in which case I'm not using the mat I'm purely using this line. If I'm making triangles or 60 degree diamond shapes then I'll line that line up with the fold of my fabric and then this as I cut down here if I just show you there I'm not cutting it but I'm just doing that then that is my 60 degree angle there so that's the way that it works so I know I've got an accurate cut that's actually a crease I've got an accurate cut every single time so that way I can then turn that around after I've cut it and use the 60 degree angle again here where have you gone there you are and then I've got an equilateral triangle when I cut out like that. So we're just really useful. And then, of course, I can switch the iron on and just get rid of, get rid of that mark. Because I use my friction pen. Um, friction pens are the early bird, by the way. It's been really, really busy for those. We have four different colours for you. These are heat erasable pens. And heat being anything from friction. So you can literally scribble these out if you're going to use them on paper. I wouldn't necessarily do that on fabric. Because the easiest way to get rid of the lines is to use an iron. Or the steam from iron if you don't want to actually iron whatever it is you're using. And that will disappear. That is something I would use in um, seam allowances, not where it's going to be seen. Occasionally, just being honest with you, these can bleach your fabric. Um, so just do a test patch first of all, but if you're marking on an area where you're not going to see it, that's fine. Don't, <laughs> don't use it for smocking, because you'll find when you draw all these lines, and I've actually used a biro for this, as you're sewing, your hands will rub it away because it's friction. So you'll end up with no markings on the back of your smocking whatsoever. But in dressmaking, in bag making, for transferring markings into seam allowances, then these are absolutely perfect. They're quick. You don't have to wet your fabric and you don't have to wait for days for the air to make it disappear. Half of the stock has sold out of those. Oh, well done to you for getting hold of those. And remember, once you place an order for anything, no more postage for the whole of the rest of the day. It's PMP free as long as you make one purchase. Right, I'm gonna show you. 
just turn the iron off. What's coming up next? So we use these clips for everything. Don't forget we've got clips. We still have yesterday's prices for, for the uh, fabric clips. Look at this. <gasps> you can make this. It's not a kit, it's not a pattern. Um, it has used a, a felting machine. So you may have seen hand felting before. This is machine felting, so it's bigger and it's quicker. All of this is felting, all of this is felting, and this is free motion embroidery with a little bit of a sparkly thread. Isn't that the most amazing wall hanging? If you want to know how to make things like this and the tools that you need to make it, do stay with us. We'll be bringing in the machine in a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Debbie Shaw and as a professional sewer, I really know how important it is to use a high quality thread. Well, you think about it. You spend a lot of money on your sewing machine, you'll spend a lot of money on fabric and you'll spend a lot of time sewing. So why let your thread let you down? I know a lot of our designers and customers prefer to use Aurifil thread. Now this is a family business. It was established in 1983 and they're based just outside Milan in Italy. They produce superior quality threads for domestic and professional sewers alike. And they've achieved worldwide success with quilters, sewers, embroiderers and textile artists who all appreciate the versatility and the strength of these threads. It's all made from Egyptian cotton, which is grown just at the side of the River Nile, and Aurifil only use the long staple threads, which gives their thread that strength. Each one of these threads goes through 15 steps before it even gets onto a spool and then comes to you to use in your sewing projects. Now at Sewing Street, we've collaborated with Aurifil and we've brought you two collections of threads. So we have the Quilters collection and these are exclusive to Sewing Street. We've done a lot of research with Quilters and these are the colours that you prefer to use. So we've put a whole collection together for you. The second collection is the Essential collection. So this is for the homemakers, for the bag makers, for the craft sewers, for the dressmakers. And again, these have been proven to be the most popular colours that you're going to use. So if you want your projects to last longer and your seams to be stronger, invest in some quality thread. Hi, I'm Wendy Orlando and I'm a craft blogger. You can find me over at thecraftyco.com and if you do head on over and have a peep, you will see that I'm a tutorial blogger. I do all kinds of crafts, but my passions are crochet, knitting and sewing, which I've done for over 45 years. In that time, I've made lots of mistakes, but I have learnt lots of tricks and top tips that I can't wait to share. What I'd like to bring to the Sewing Street table is to show that you don't need to have gone to university or have a degree in design to be able to sew. You just need passion, a bit of courage to take the first steps and a whole lot of patience. Oh, and an unpicker. You will need an unpicker. I do hope that you will follow me as I take my Sewing Street journey and I look forward to seeing you all again soon. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi there, my name's Alison Marion and I'm thrilled to be joining the Sewing Street family. I live in Staffordshire where I run a couple of sewing groups and I have a passion for vintage sewing machines and also applique. I've stitched in some form for as long as I can remember, but I absolutely love teaching and helping people stretch their skills and hopefully demystifying some of the techniques that can be quite daunting for beginners. So I'm looking forward to meeting the team and getting into the studio. See you soon. Welcome back again. Uh, it's already been busy for our embellishing machine. This is the first time we brought you an embellishing machine to, uh, to Sewing Street. This is, this is a fun machine. 
Um, with the sewing machine, um, you can have fun with the sewing machine, you can be very creative and you can do lots of mending and repairing, it pays for itself. This machine is all about having fun. It's about using up tiny scraps of your leftover fabrics, it's about being creative. You don't need to be an artist to be able to create some wonderful work with this machine. You may have seen um, some hand felting shows with Delphine Brooks on the shows before now and she'll use maybe five needles and a little hand thing and go on to sponge and do this and spend hours creating wonderful things. This machine will do the same thing, but an awful lot quicker, which means that you can tackle some very big projects if you wanted to. Um, Jane's going to be with me in just a second and she'll talk you more through this. I've had my embellishing machine for, do you know, probably 10 years now. And it's one of those things that I, I'll, I'll bring it out and I'll spend days, you get quite hooked on it and then it goes away again and you forget about it. And when I heard that we were having an embellishing machine, oh, I can't even find it. Um, I just wanted to get felting. I, I wanted to start creating. It really just set off, it sets off your juices, so to speak. Um, there are five needles in here. Um, this is what, what's going to be on the machine when you get it home. Oh, in fact, this one is going to be on the machine when you get it home. Um, so that, that, that is a unit with five needles. These needles are barbed. There's no threading. Um, there's no threads involved in this at all unless you're embellishing them. These are barbed needles. They're incredibly sharp. And by barbed, I mean no eyes in the needle. They have... Oh, cut my finger earlier. That's not very nice. I'll do that one. Um, they've got like nicks in the sides of them, which makes them very, very coarse. So these aren't just very, very sharp on the points, they're very, very sharp all the way down the shank as well. But no eyes in the needles, these are purely for meshing together your fabric, for felting the fabric and creating new fabrics from them. So that's going to be on the machine. But what we're also including is a single needle if you want to do fine work. And again, Jane will explain all of this later. And as a bonus, you're actually going to get one of the these heads that has replaceable needles on it as well. Because this machine has over a hundred pounds worth of bonus included with it which is amazing so you get your screwdrivers and you'll have um, a plate for sewing through thicker fabrics all of this is part of the standard price so if you have a shop around you're going to find similar price to this with all of these bits and bobs included what you won't find is inspiration from my family heart twice over um, the first 10 people will get these, first 10 people to place your order and you've already been doing that already. So you've got two DVDs included. We're also going to include, there you go, as I said earlier, this is one that's actually on the machine at the moment because Jane's been using it. That wouldn't normally be included in your price, but you're getting this one, which is your adapter. So you can change the needles individually and you're getting spare needles there as well. And on top of that, as part of your over £100 bonus, you've got a massive extension table. This would be normally $78.99 on its own. If you want it, you can buy it. <laughs> but you wouldn't. It is available on the website. So if you already have your embellisher and you need an extension table, we have it on the website for you on sewingstreet.com. Um, but if you don't, you're getting it anyway. And that's going to increase the amount of space to support your fabrics, but also give you resting room for your arms as you're, um, as you're felting. But have a look at this. You can you can make that. We're not giving you patterns and instructions. You've got to use your own imagination. But why couldn't you? Why couldn't you create a masterpiece like this is? Imagine that hanging on your living room. Imagine giving that as a gift over your fireplace. Oh, that's lovely. Where did you buy it? Oh, I made it. it needs to be in a frame, that one. And this could be using leftover scraps. This doesn't even have to be going out and buying anything new. So I, get, I, just, I need to get my machine out when I get home. It's the one thing I, I don't normally take sewing into the garden because if it's sunny, it's just it's too bright. But I do take felting into the garden. I do take my embellisher out there. And again, I've had mine I've had for about 10 years now. Why shouldn't you make placemats with beautiful designs on like this? Very affordable. It's so satisfying when you make them. You know, every single one's going to be different. Even if you were to follow a pattern, you're never going to be able to create two of exactly the same thing. If you want some instructions, some ideas, have a look on the Genomi website. And um, the, this is one of the patterns. Isn't that amazing? It looks like paintwork, doesn't it? These are almost like brush strokes. And you're going to need a matching tea cosy, aren't you? Now, felting by hand is fantastic. Um, it does have a lot of this kind of motion.
that can be quite repetitive. That, that isn't necessarily for everybody. I'm just going to do that. That's a lot easier, isn't it? I couldn't have felt that quickly by hand. <laughs> but that's the kind of speed that you're going to be able to filter, which is why for larger projects, you can do smaller projects as well, but that's why for larger projects you're going to need a felting machine. Of course you can go slower, but you're not going to. Or you can just write your name. If your name's Janome, that's brilliant. Um, but you can really personalise things. This could be a door hanging for a child's bedroom. Um, this could actually be, um, you, you can embellish onto clothing that you've already got. If you've got knitted clothes in wool particularly, that's, you, know, you wouldn't embellish something like the cotton that I'm wearing. But if it's knitwear, um, then that's going to be absolutely fine. Anyhow, you want to see this in action, don't you? So it's £359. You can order on the website, you can order on the phone lines. You're getting a two-year warranty from Janome as well. But what you're investing in is hours and hours and loads of fun. Oh gosh, it's really busy for this one this morning. Don't miss out. Um, place your order now, go through to checkout, make sure that you've got yours and then come back again and have a look at uh, the demonstrations and the explanations that Jane's going to be bringing you in just a second. Um, if you've never ordered from us before, oh, welcome along to Sewing Street. We've got a couple of ways for you to order. So it's over to Vicky and she'll tell you how. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Jane, welcome back again. Good morning again. <laughs> I've, I've been so excited that we've got it an is. embellishing machine. It's fabulous. I say, I actually watched DVD one yesterday. Right. I thought I'll sit there with a cup of tea and watch it. And I thought, right, I've just got to go and get it out and have another yeah. play. It's to me, it's a what if machine. Yes. Um, the only thing I wouldn't put underneath it is metallics. Anything with metallic in it. Okay. Is, um, because it, it's a little bit too too hard, if that makes sense. Um, you've got to, the only thing you've really got to watch that with is some organzas and metallic. Right. So it's just a little one because you don't want to break so your needles. Natural fibres are going to be best. Natural fibres are fine. I tend to felt into a to, into a felt background, okay. but you can use calicos and things like that. Yeah. It's experimenting, isn't it? It is just playing. We've all got. I don't care anybody says otherwise. We've all got loads of scraps around, yeah. and I keep all kinds of weird and wonderful things, and they're great to just put under here and have a go with and see what happens. And and you must have a play before you. Don't take on a huge project and just think, right, I'm going no. to make this amazing wall hanging. No. Because the fabrics will behave in different ways, won't they? They're all different. So if you tend throw a piece of yeah. ribbon at it, it, it might really sh shrink it. It might up. shrink it up and it might not work as well as something yeah. else that's woven. So it really is experimented. Maybe do like a little fold for yourself with all your little yeah, bits of samples nice in and put little notes in there. Yeah. But say the DVDs, I didn't get time to watch number two. I will take it home and watch it later. <laughs> so, but say number one, I've done some of the bits that were on there. So it just gives you a little bit of an overview of how to use the machine. Oh. Okay, so, so what, what is felting? Explain what the machine does. It barbs, it with. meshes the fibres together. So it's literally the same with the barb needles. It's the same as hand felting, but it's much, much quicker. So it's just one of those things that's slightly different. So, way so of you're doing literally. It. It just like meshes meshing, the fibres, you're you going felt, together, you are right. basically. I've done, I used to do wet felt making and I've made pre-felts on here as well. So it's much quicker than doing it by hand. So you, if you want a small piece, it's really quick to lay out and do. And it's, it's just really, it's experimental. You're creating your own fabric, aren't you? You are. Your own fabric. you are. Whether you're going to cut into that and make smaller pieces. Oh, I'm, I should have brought it. I made an amazing handbag, if I say so myself. <laughs> the tutorial is on YouTube. Um, <laughs> using... Brightly coloured strips of felt just joined together yep. randomly. Yep. I did hand sew some um, 
Angelina fibres yes. over the top of it, and then literally fold over and put a um, yeah, like a little like touch bag type thing. So, yeah, you could do that. Make yourself a yeah. you know a piece of this, and again do the same. You could line it then afterwards if you wanted to. Yeah. You yeah. can also embellish by hand um, and do some beads. It, it's just endless. It's a great way to get to all the bits and pieces that we've all got tucked away in the corner of the sewing room. Could you show us the Russian doll behind you? I can. I was, I She's fabulous. Yeah. She is absolutely fabulous. We can pick it up. Which one's the best one for that? Now, some of the detail on there is really fine. It actually looks like a pen outline. But it that, does, but felting. you've got the single needle. Yeah. That little single needle, which is absolutely brilliant for fine work. So you can do those. And again, you've got some hand embroidery stitches on here as well. There's nothing to stop you beading. It really is just a... It's just there's so much scope with it. It's like the sewing version of mixed media, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Mix, mixed fabric. Yeah. Well, um, again, you can incorporate this in mixed media projects as well. Yeah. So you can do some base fabrics, cut them up, join them to something else. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's great fun. But imagine, oh, imagine something like this. Obviously, this is a... I'm a, very a envious hanging. of that. That might not go back to the office. I might keep Didn't that. Didn't you do this last night? Of course I did. <laughs> <laughs> but look at the detail on that. I mean, now, I'm, I'm imagining um, maybe using a section of something like this on the front of a waistcoat. You could, yeah. Um, or, I mean, a wall hanging like this would be amazing. I think, yeah. I think this needs a frame, I really do. Um, but maybe on a, a belt or a, a strap. Oh, absolutely, anything. Bags, yeah. any cushions, anything. Yeah. And again, if you look in the, that big blue flower in the corner, that's just scrim. So a lot of us oh. who, who do experimental things like this, I quite like hand dyeing fabrics and bits. And we've always got bits and pieces left over. So it's a great way to incorporate everything. The tiniest pieces done. as yeah. well, isn't it? And if it? it's not gone quite right for what you want it, the chances are by the time you've embellished it and added some bits, it will look beautiful. Yeah. So... And this, once it's felted like this, that's that's it, isn't it? That, that's that it. There. This has got some um, free machine off. embroidery on the top, so yeah. you can incorporate different techniques with it. So you could do your base fabrics and do all kinds of things with it then. Yeah. But again, this, uh, as a whole sheet, uh, amazing. Um, but maybe you just want a poppy. If you just cut it, when you trim these back, a little bit like when Delphine does her hand sewing, and uh, the hand felting, and you know she has these box frames that she puts them in. As soon as she puts a mount around something, it, it just pops oh, out, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks yeah. so yeah. professional. You can do it on a large scale now with the embellisher. Mm. And, yeah. and I was saying earlier um, about the repetitiveness. It can be. I've got some friends who've got repetitive strain injuries, injury, yeah. so it would be absolutely no good for them. But again, the, the hand felting, again, if you want some really tiny detail, then you, know, you can well. mix them two up. Yes. It's not just, I've got to do it all on the machine. You can yeah. mix all your different techniques and different ways of doing things together. Shall we have a look at what you were playing with last night? Last night I was playing with these. I found some little pieces of fabric, not being a dressmaker, I'm not quite sure where they came from, but that's what we started with. So it's just quite a, a light, fluffy fabric. And I just did two different things with it. Um, the first one, I think you can see it where it's just, let me go that way. I have literally just embellished over the whole piece of fabric. It did start off that size, so you do need to be aware that it will shrink everything in because it's pushing the fibres through, so it's going to pull it in. Is your work the texture that is I, you know, I, I like the frayed bits around the edge. I think yeah. if, I, if, I, if I was going to frame that, I'd actually leave the frayed bits on. Yeah, I, I would love to do a book cover with this on it. Yeah, and nice. then maybe stitch into it a little bit more mixed media. And then the other one, I thought, well, I'll have a go. And I literally just embellished round the sides in the blue and left the actual flowers free. And again, so it's very different. It's just a totally different way of using scraps. And that's. That is a, is that a viscose or It's a berry. I'm not quite sure. It's one of my little pieces out of the box. That so I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have tried yeah. that. Would have, cause it it's really cool. It's very, very fine. Yeah. Um, but it's, I absolutely love that. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. It, it almost looks like a hand painting. I've and noticed. it looks quite aged, doesn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of texture yeah. in there. So that's one thing that you can do with it. So and we've all got, I mean, I'm not particularly a dressmaker, but we all acquire lots of different types of fabrics and scraps. So that's a really nice way of using all the bits and pieces. The other one I was playing with, it, you can do fabulous things with organzas on this. And that literally is just some random pieces of organza just embellished on some more heavily than others. And again, it frays out. It gives you some really good texture. Yeah. And, so, and again, it over. And the back, you can see. Oh, that wasn't. There was no, no. There's another. There's the another one there that ah, I did. Okay. But this, you can see where you've come through it. Yes. But it's just the texture on it. You can embellish straight onto organs. I think I've got some in my bag, so we can have a look at that. This again is just. It's almost. It's not a prefab, really. So I was doing it for something else. And I've just got a piece of net in the middle. 
laid wool fibres on as if you were doing pre-felt, embellished it, turned it over, done the same on the other side and it's quite a substantial piece of fabric now. Oh, this is the one you like, isn't it? That's the this one. This is the one. We'll have a look at this in a minute because I've got some wool tops with me. So that is literally just wool tops. I'll put it that way. but it looks a little bit better. Just laid out and embellished. Um, and then you can build up the depth of colour as well if you want. So you put a lot of um, wool tops on, you think, oh, that'd be fine. But once you start embellishing, it changes it dramatically. So you can go back and build up the colours. But this is the one. I like this. I actually prefer that side. Isn't that gorgeous? That is so... I mean, if you were doing landscapes or yes. anything like that, it would be fabulous. For it's softer, picture. isn't it? Because they're very using soft, more of the backing. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah, very soft. Lovely. We like this. Well, that is one. But say that side, it's a bit bright, a bit yeah. fine, but that side is absolutely yeah. amazing. Really we'll pull some of those up in a minute. The other one I did, I got some pre felt, which is the white, and I just put some red wall tops on and just ran round it on the embellisher so that we're looking that on the back. And I then thought, you know what, so I've cut them up into some rough shapes. You can be really precise if you want. And just embellish them again onto another piece of felt. And it's made the, the white pre-felt stand out a lot more. It's almost pulled in with it. So, And again, book covers, bags, anything. Yeah. And the back again is quite soft. Can we see it in action, Jane? Oh, um, I'm, I'm saying that, moving you on swiftly, because half of the stock sold out. Oh. So, in, in fact, we're making phone calls at the moment, but it's probably you that are trying to phone. Yeah, I'm here, I'm afraid. My <laughs> phone's on silent, honestly. <laughs> so, I'm going to put that one there. I was quite impressed I managed to do that correctly. Okay. So, and again, let me just pop some of these pieces out. I've got a whole bag full of them, bits and pieces in here. So, I've got quite a lot of little bits of war tops. They're readily available. They're not difficult to get hold of. Bits and pieces so it's like this. It's roving yarn, isn't it? It's roving yarn, your yeah. wool tops, whatever. Say, because I used to wet felt. And I'm literally, you're just literally pulling them out, make the fibres quite flat. You don't want big lumps in it. Just lay them on, popping them out quite flat. And again, this is where the table will come in really, really handy if you've got a big piece of work. Yeah. Although I would build something really big up, I'd build it up quite slowly. So I'm just going to pop those on. I'll have a little bit of green. As well, so you can say so you can just be as wild as you want with could them. You, could you just kind of scooch it over this way a little bit so we can see yeah, what you're doing? I always end up with far too many things on the table. <laughs> so, do you always use felt on the background? I tend to use it mostly. I use calico as well sometimes. Yeah. So it just depends really what you're doing. Calico works quite well as long as it's a woven base because it's obviously got to have something to mesh the fibres through. Okay. I'm going to put that there. So that's quite fluffy now. So if I put this under the machine, it's going to start pushing it around. So a piece of really standard net. This has been used quite a lot. You can get quite a few uses out, but it gets little holes in it. Even. So just lay it over the top to hold it in place. Okay, there's a couple of ways of starting off. A nice way to start off is to start running and just run on slowly. Let me just, I shouldn't probably do that with the net. So I'm going to pop it underneath. So in the middle again, so you're just tacking it down. So there's no feed dogs on this? No feed dogs on it. It's a bit like free machining because you are guiding everything. You know, the machine is literally, it's going where you want. So if you like free machine embroidery, this is, or free machine quilting, then this is a really nice way of home. Just expanding so it a little bit further. important to keep moving, isn't it? Yeah, you need to hole. keep moving, otherwise you'll have a hole or you'll get really dense patches. So I've literally just run over the top and I'm going to run straight off the side now. Make sure that when you stop you either run off the side or you make sure the needles are out of your work before you do it. This will just literally pull off the top now. Oh. So it's just held everything in place for me to get it almost tacked down. Got some little holes in but it's easily available. This is, oh, it's very cheap. <laughs> God, so own. that's my foot. And then I'm back on again and I can just literally keep going. You can felt it in as much or as little as you want as long as you've tacked it together. You can do some areas more densely than others. And you can just keep throwing more. But it's more quite on therapeutic it. actually, yeah. so I've got this on for but again it's getting the rhythm, try not to, to snatch it and jerk it, or you may snap a needle. Again we saw the stitch plate with a large centre hole. If you've got something that's quite heavy, then it's quite nice to just pop that on. But important to mention as well while you're there, the guard that's around Yeah, the there is a guard. Yeah, the needles are moving very fast, you've got five of them and they're yeah. sharp all the way down. They are very sharp, so. yeah. 
I think most people who've done the hand needle felting have at some point stabbed themselves with yes. the needle. I know I have on more than one occasion and it hurts. And this? Yeah, don't worry if you break a needle, it's going to happen, isn't it? It does happen, I broke two instantly last night. As soon as I went on. I think it's there. Yep, you've got spares. You won't break one for ages and then say last night, I just want to. I think it's probably because I haven't used it for a while and it's getting the rhythm back again. And it's, say, it's trying to do some little sample pieces. Um, take my foot away from there. Do some little sample pieces, get some small pieces to play with before you actually start doing a big project. And, and do you know you'll use those? You'll you use will. Those this is like pieces. this, I just chop these up and it's a yeah. really nice texture. Just flipped it over because that's, again, it looks a bit, mm, what have I done there? But once you start turning them over and looking at the other side, and that you can see where it has actually taken the felts in and we're starting to get that lovely shading on the back with it. I love the back of them. Oh, I love the back it's, of them yeah. as well, to be honest. And on the black, <laughs> it really pops out. Yeah. So if I want to now, I can go back and think, oh, no, that's a little bit. It's not dense enough. Just go back and lay some more on. Just lay some more fibres on. Build it up. And you can spend quite a long time just building up and getting the right depths yeah. of colour that you need. So again, just pop those on. A little bit of net over the top just to tack it down. So you can, I'm going to start off here then and run on. Gently. Children absolutely love this machine. They used to do some youth yeah. work and we used to take one in. And because they've actually got almost an instant finished project. So it'll be great for doing bookmarks or something with them. Yes. So again, I'm just going to keep going. So we'll just I'm going to take that off. Take the net off again. And again, you can see we've got more depth of colour on the back. I was going to say, you're, you are creating fabric, you're being artistic. Yep. You don't have to be an artist, you don't have no. to have any particular time. If you can move your arms around, put your foot down. You're fine, yeah. I say I can't draw to save my life, but I can quite happily create things on here. Yeah. So we were saying before, we've got the needle guard here, which does lift up. Make sure it's always down in position when you're sewing, because if you break a needle, it might ping out. Yes. So just be careful. And also, you can alter the height of the foot. I'm going to be naughty and open this one. It is mine from home, so I'm going to show you exactly what you get in the conversion kit. So you've got a different foot in the conversion kit, so you need to, when you put the, the other unit on, the multi one here, you need to make sure that you put this foot on as well. Okay. So it goes with it. And again, there's a slot on the back, so you can raise it. So if you've got something that's quite dense, you can take the foot up so you're not dragging. Okay. Or equally, if it's quite flat, you can drop it down a little bit. Um, so, so make there's sure... There's no take-up lever on this, like a sewing no, machine? No, absolutely so. nothing. So I'm going to pop that back in there. And again, you know, keep your little bottles for any broken yeah. needles. That's I've got a, a sharp idea. tub at home, but, you know, it's quite handy to pop even your same machine needles because yeah. we all break them occasionally. And you've got some spare needles with it. You also, as you said, you get the single needle unit, which is absolutely brilliant for fine work. It's just a single needle so on there. So you maybe doing characters and you're putting eyes on there. Yep, eyes, like outlining. The, uh, outlining the Russian doll yeah. behind you, that kind you of thing. You can outline it, so that's great. The tower that comes on the machine, I've changed mine because I was using it last night, is a fixed one. Right. Um, so, so if you break one of those, would you just carry on? No, you wouldn't because it sort of, you'll hear it, it pings right. in it. You can hear it if you break one, I know, because I may have broken several <laughs> in the past. So, and again, with the um, unit, let me take this, with the unit, with the individual needles, I could work with three needles if I wanted to. to. What I will say, let me pop this little screwdriver out is you've got the little Allen keys for here, which loosens the needles here. Don't over-loosen the screw, because if you take that screw out, it's a bit of a devil to get back in. Yes, or so to find just, it. <laughs> yeah, to find it first, but then to get it back in again. So just loosen it enough to take the needle out. Right. Don't overdo it. And again, I don't know if we can pick it up on here, but there's a flat side on oh, the top like of the, the unit. Needle. Yeah, the flat side of the unit goes to the right-hand side All right. when you pop it in. So it's just because I automatically you want to put it to the back, like yes. you do the same, but it's actually on the right hand side, so it sits in. There's a very good tip on um, the first DVD as well, as how to put your needles in really easily, how to put oh, the really? unit in. Yeah, I should let you watch that and find out. <laughs> so we've got a limited number of DVDs. When that stock's yeah. gone, that's it. Um, you're getting over a hundred pounds worth of freebies when you buy the machine, uh, but you're just going to have loads of fun. There's with so it. much fun with it. I see if I think I've got. I've got some more. We, we are down to single figures with the machine now. It's going really quickly. Oh. So again, it's just a standard piece 
of organza. I'm going to make sure that's down. Um, and you can literally just go over it. And the texture that you can get is amazing on these. I did see once many years ago in one of the sewing magazines, which is sadly no longer with us, they'd actually embellished a load of very lightweight fabric and then made it into a blouse. And oh. it looked fabulous because you can see, I'll pop that on, you probably can't see it so well on here, but you can see the texture that you can get onto yeah. your organzas. You can pleat it as well. I've done little soft bowls where I've actually embellished up the sides to make them stand up. You really? can reinforce it with stitching if it's something you're going to use a lot. But it's just, it's just so nice to play with. That'd make a nice scarf, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. And with silk as well, it goes yeah. beautifully with silk. But put a little base under your silk, um, just to give a little bit more support while you're doing it so it doesn't work. And you can, it will come straight off. But you can just have so much fun with them. You really can. I think, I think that's what it's all about. You're creating something unique. You're having fun while you're doing mm. it. No two items are going to be the same no. because it's been impossible to replicate no. anything. Using up scraps of fabric. Yep. And it is, I, I'll warn you, it is addictive. It's very addictive. I was sitting there at half past 11 last night. So oh, I thought, no, I'll, just have a, I'll just do a bit more. Because yeah. like you, I've had this at home for a while. I picked it for a specific thing I wanted to do. Um, and it comes out and I'll spend two or three days solid on it and do a load of different pieces of fabric yeah. and then think, right, I'll put you away. I can now work with what I've made and do some different bits and pieces. I was very impressed last night. I even managed to write my name. <laughs> <laughs> and that literally is, again, a piece of pre -fab. It's quite... I did have some somewhere. It's quite readily available for felt making. Okay. And it's literally a piece of that that I chopped off, embellished on. But you've got to do it from the reverse. Right. So remember, you're writing your name. It's like doing Bondo Web applique, isn't it? You've got to put it on back to front. I very nearly ended up with one letter the wrong way around. <laughs> it was a Y, actually. I'm thinking, oh, no. But it's really, and it's just, you know, for children, you could actually make, it would be quite nice. I was looking at this thing, to make like a noughts and crosses game for the children. That's a nice wouldn't idea. Because yeah. you could embellish all the little squares and also do a grid. Yeah. And they're not going to fall over. So if you're travelling or you're away, it folds up really easily. And then you've got a really nice yeah. little game for them. I'll tell you what's one of the, the most unusual things I've felt is Alsatian hair. I've done dog hair, yes. And camel hair. Camel hair, really? I did a many Who's years. Who's got a pet camel? Well, you'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> you'd be surprised. <laughs> but many years ago, I did a wet felty. City and girls, and you do different fibres in there. So you did a city and girls. I did in oh, wet. Wow. I quite like wet felting. Yes, it's one of those things that I haven't got time to do anymore. <laughs> which is why I've got loads of wool tops. Um, but it really is. And again, you can incorporate the machine, even if you're a wet felter, you can still incorporate it to put the detail in onto yes. things like vessels and things like that that you make. Yeah. So it really is one of those that you get it out and you're thinking, why have I not got you out for the last three months? Yeah. Just come out and play with it. And I yeah. found with the um, animal hair that I use, mm. a shorter hair didn't seem to work so well. No. Um, but I, I, I kind of stretched out some of the wool tops yeah. and put it over the top yeah. to hold it down. It's the same as you mentioned Angelina earlier. Yeah. I absolutely love Angelina. Yeah. But you've got to incorporate it with some yes. fibres, otherwise it won't mesh in. You can just mix them together. And again, that's got that lovely shimmery effect, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, you're going to have so much fun. Oh, with it is it. great. This is going to be one of the best buys you've ever made. It's just, um, it's, it's just one of those can... things that you can try all different bits and pieces. Yeah, throw what you like at. If it doesn't yeah. work, it doesn't work. It you're doesn't... not wasting very much because no, you're probably using scraps anyway. Yeah. We, we've had a question from Jane. Hi, Jane. Hi. She says hi, Debbie and Jane. Um, oh, are there any downloads available with in, with information or information online? There is a DVD yet in the book. Um, what, you can't in, make DVDs, that's a problem. Okay. Um, YouTube. Yeah, there's loads on there. Good old YouTube. I mean, if you put my family heart's name in, I'm sure that a lot of what's on these DVDs will actually be on YouTube somewhere, or okay. similar things will be. But you find, once you get the basics, which is what these are for, so I'm going to have a look at Embellishing Level 2 tonight. <laughs> <laughs> um, I looked at that one, and it covers some of these techniques. So once you've got the basic techniques, then you can just play with it. Yeah. But keep all your samples because they will be used at some point for different projects. Okay. Really do. <laughs> Jane, can we get any more? Keep getting more machines. We're about to sell out. We can get more machines, but I say the DVDs were limited to the first 10 people. Right. So, But the machines, yeah, with the needle kit on the table, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can. So I, need to I held you some extra ones. I need to negotiate with you. Yes. Um, <laughs> Why do you want one? No, you, <laughs> no you've already got one. <laughs> I've got one, I'm fine. 
Um, no, we, we, we are about to go. Probably just after the end of the show, then yeah. we are going to. I did hold some extra stock for you yesterday because I knew this would happen with it. <laughs> because it's one of those, I don't know, it's just. Yeah. <laughs> we don't see them often enough. No, no. Um, I can't, I mean, I, I demonstrated this on um, on a different shopping channel, but I'm probably going back eight to ten years. It's that got to be that. Seen. That's how long they, ago they yeah. came out. Yeah. And I used to do the shows then, and I used to spend four days on one of these. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and it, it does stretch your imagination. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, as I said before, it's addictive. You just you, you've been looking for things to throw underneath yeah. it and just see what happens. It's like I keep all my I do a lot of computerized machine embroidery, um, and I keep all the thread ends. Yeah. So they're fabulous to just chuck in with other things. I've also got in my little. So if we've got if we've got things bag. like your embroidery thread. Yeah. You know, when when you come to the end of your sewing and there's about that much left, don't even put that in the bin because you're going to be able to chuck it at your felting yeah, machine. Yeah, I'm just having a little create some delve under here. I I, I was um, I, I did have a chat with somebody who was suggested using the fluff out of your tumble dryer. You can do it, but yeah. it's grey. Why, why is it? No matter what colour you put in the tumble dryer, it's, it's all grey. it's like this sort of bluey grey colour, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. So and this yeah, and this is like want. waste sari silk, which anybody who does any kind of oh, mixed sorry, media, silks. that's mine. <laughs> And again, there's more in there, different colours. So yeah. it really is. I've also got some, let's say I used to do quite a lot of mixed media and it makes me want to get back into it. They're silk hankies they're known as, so they're just oh. literally... Oh, I wouldn't want to blow my nose on that then. No, probably not. But you can mix your fibres with it and embellish into it, into a background, oh. and you get some fabulous... And if you're a knitter? Yeah, loads of wool. The big chunky really yarns. Yeah. And, and write names and things you with You can yarn. wear the Janome one under there. That's done with wool. Oh, is it? Yes, it's for you. Have a look. A lot of that is done with knitting wool. So you can do really fine mm. work. So, yeah, if you're a sewer or a knitter, or actually, in fact, if you don't do either of them, you can still create yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I um, used to, and I haven't got any anymore, and it's, uh, with the way things are, okay. you know, the big fat chunky wool, the really loose woven yes. wool, that yeah. is brilliant for these because you can lay them side by side and mesh them together to make a piece of fabric. You can cut shapes out yeah. of it. You know, that, that kind of yarn that you can knit, uh, like very loose scarves, mm. and it's got like big. Loose yes, on that, it. yeah, that that kind of that thing sort of thing will be great. Yeah, and again, you can cut the shapes out, then embellish them onto something else. Yeah. And again, like the little cherries, you've got the little bit of shading in the corner, so you can really go to town with it. Now, remember, you've got the single needle unit as well. So if you wanted to add just a little highlight, that brings it to life, doesn't it? That's that little highlight makes these three dimensional it makes them round and you've got all of the tools to be able to do that these are all extras you don't normally get all of these things unless you order now but again we're, we're going to sell out so if this is in your basket on the website can you please go through to check out because the last thing that i want is people messaging in the next hour saying well i, I did have it in my basket but it's gone but yeah. it's not there say with anymore. the dvds they're the, the first 10 so yeah. but we i did hold you some more machines because i had a feeling this might happen <laughs> But so it, the machine move out, but if you want if you want the deal that we've yeah, got for you now, the we need to be DVDs, yeah. yeah. We will still include the table and the needles for you. Oh that's good of you. Yeah. But not the DVDs. So there you go. So that's have a bit of negotiation. Yes. Isn't it? yes. I did. I always negotiate. <laughs> <laughs> I always negotiate for yeah, you. You see what happens. Here. Yeah. But it, it is, it's say it's just uh, say I say it's my what if machine. Yeah. What if I put that underneath? What's going to happen? Oh, have another go. Show us again what we what? do. Okay, have okay. a go. Should I pop some blue on now? And just... I thought you said glue. No, don't glue, put glue on put it. Glue on. We, no, we wouldn't put glue on these. But it is literally just popping out all the bits and pieces. And again, you can layer it up. So you've come in with different shades going through. It is one of those that you'll sit there. I was sitting there on the dining room table last night. and said to you, it's about half eleven. I think I'm not going to go to bed. I've got to get up at half past five this morning. <laughs> Half five? You had a lion. I did. Well, I only lived down the road. <laughs> <laughs> so that was great. But, um, yeah, so underneath. And again, it's just being aware when you're using it, um, just to run it on like that and into the centre first, just to mesh it down, just to hold it loosely. And that would do. Yeah, it's, it's really therapeutic. Watch. It's very therapeutic to do. Mm. Then I say you can see my net now. We're starting to get some little holes in, but it's so easy to get hold of that, and it just makes it easy. But again, onto the edge, and just keep going. So this could be um, place mats. I might even replace that sewing machine mat at some point. Yeah, nice Maybe sewing machine, machine mat. mat. Yeah. Um, you could you can make a pretty lovely felt quilt. 
might be a little bit warm, especially in this weather. Yeah. <laughs> but you can do like little key fobs and things like that will be lovely done on this. So you can just do all your bits and pieces. And then what I'm going to do is, have we got any scissors handy? Um, in the pot there. No, well, oh, there's just one or two pairs. <laughs> just, just a few. I'm going to cut this up. I'm going to take that on the back and just pop it onto. And again, if you want to be really precise, get your rotary cutter out and do it. But yeah. um, I'll just take that and I'm going to cut it in again and just pop it back onto another piece of felt. And again, when I'm starting to do this, you know, if you're not sure, if you think it might be a little bit heavy, then just wind it through and you'll feel the needles going yeah. in. And again, experiment with the other plate as well. So I think we're going to do the nice soft side. Not on that one because it's okay. I'd like to see a soft side, Jen. Oh, I have got one yeah. somewhere, honestly. <laughs> we'll pop it onto there and literally just start. Again, in the centre, I'll use that just to tack it down. The last... Uh, the next person, sorry, to check out your baskets is uh, then the last one today. We, we are literally about to sell out one, one left. So stop watching for a minute. Yeah, <laughs> run out, check out, and then, then you've got that. Yeah. Buy and team waiting outside the door. Okay. Be prepared to have your arm twisted right up the back. Yeah, there we go, so out. And again, that's just meshed itself onto there for me. So I can put, and you can put them quite randomly. We can have a go with a brighter one and just see what it looks like. Pop that onto there. It's quite liberating actually. Say I am a quilter normally and we're quite precise most of the time. Yeah. So with this it's quite liberating just to be quite, you know, let's just put it on and go for it and see what happens. <laughs> you can be really precise if you want to, but it's just... no, I know you're having loads of fun, Jane. I am, do I have to but stop now? I'm afraid we're gonna have to send you into the, um, into the corner into again. The buyer's room now. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. So just pop that off and again you can see it's just mesh that one on as well and it's pushing it through to the back. Oh. No, no, thank you so much. You are very welcome. Um, we are just about to sell out that last one. Please check out your basket if that's if that's you on the website. That's you. Check out your basket. Um, we'll see you again at uh, 11, 11 o'clock. We've got we, lots, haven't we? We have <laughs> and it's been really busy for the 11 o'clock show as well. Oh. Um, anything else that you want to order, we've got a couple of ways of doing that. So uh, let's take a quick look and we'll see you again in a couple of minutes. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, 
drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved. And it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides, suitable for all skill levels, to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. To see me back. <laughs> <laughs> My baby piece of kiss with the sewing is the same with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in the school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Okay, so the embellishment machine has sold out. Um, Jane's off to, to negotiate. Poor Jane. She should be back at 11 o'clock this morning, but they're very good at negotiating on Sewing Street. So if, she, if she's got a sling or something, it's because the arm went right up. Okay, uh, we have a brand new launch for you today. Um, this is um, an easy way to start stitching because you have iron-on transfer designs. It's by Brian Haggard. He's uh, a gentleman um, sewer from, <laughs> from Illinois. <laughs> um, and he loves to hand embroider and he loves anything that uh, this bo botanical plant um, or insect inspired and what he's done here is put together a folder for you so you have the book inside and full size transfers as well I want to say full size these are actually really big so these are iron on transfers couldn't be easier you iron these onto your fabric they're very detailed they're very delicate you stitch over the top and when you wash the fabric the transfer completely disappears and you can use this in, uh, time and time again so just keep using them over and over so for a beginner embroiderer that is an incredible idea just move that out of the way so let's fold that neatly so I can show you. You can trace as well if you wanted to and in fact because eventually after a few uses these the ink on these will disappear so maybe trace them off beforehand or um, for, are we allowed to photocopy? I don't know maybe I shouldn't have said that. Uh, for personal use I'm sure that Brian won't mind um, then of course that won't be a transfer but you can then um, use these as um, maybe trace them off onto fabric so you can just embroider over the top. I love this one at the bottom. That's one big long design look. So how about a border on your Christmas tablecloth? You can split these up individually. You don't have to do one big long one. Um, a wall hanging would look lovely. The stitches are explained in the book as well. So it's a nice reminder for those of us maybe like me that used to embroider when I was younger. It was something that uh, my grandma did, my mum used to do. And I do remember sitting in front of the fire of an evening after toasting marshmallows. Do you remember doing that? And in fact, we used to do toast on the fire. Do you remember toasting forks with an extendable handle? You could have a piece of bread over the fire. I used to love the taste. Sooty toast. Anyway, I don't know where that came from. Um, You've got a floor. Oh, wouldn't that be lovely for Christmas? It's not necessarily Christmassy, but if you were to use some Christmas type of threads, just saying, brand new today, um, and maybe do a few highlights in silk. Oh, that because they could look like snowflakes, couldn't they? 
Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, the biggest, most amazing Christmas card. Or cut the centre out and make it into a photo frame. That would be fantastic. Or you could, oh, change it for the season. So change the colours. So you've got a sparkle at Christmas time. Oh, you're going to need such a lot of thread. Maybe you're going to need 100 threads. Hmm? Look at what you've got in here. You've got your summer colours, spring colours, autumn colours. So for springtime, I would go for, oh, Easter colours, yellows and greens, daffodil colours, um, or snowdrops or crocuses, the purples and the lilacs. And then going into summertime, then, oh, let's go for reds and yellows and more beachy colours for summertime. Into autumn, we can go for browns and russets and neutrals. And then winter's got to be icy blues, hasn't it? Icy blues with a little bit of metallic highlights. So imagine four pictures on your wall. Maybe you could put a bit of felting in the middle of it as well. And what about the bees? Those bees can be transferred onto anything. They're quite small. So that could be onto uh, maybe a blouse. Um, or just add them to any of the floral designs. My eldest granddaughter is called Beatrice. And she, uh, Beatrix, sorry. And she's, um, she's shortened her own name to B. So she has a lot of things with bees on. So that would be just quite nice as a little motif on a t-shirt, maybe. Let's have a look at the designs in the book, though, as well, while we're here. So those are all to be transferred, loads of them. And remember, they are multi-use. But this, all botanical embroidery, so there's a little bit about Brian in here. He's from Illinois. He loves bees. So these are the designs that you have. So bees are my favourite insects, he says. And... A tassel fern. Oh, rosemary. So you can you can build up your own imagery, if you will, with these as well. These are all of your different stitches look. So you may recognise a herringbone stitch from, from Hemingway Chanel style jacket. Um, stab stitching, different types of knots and French knots. A modern shadow. Oh, see, that's isn't that striking? That would be a nice autumn one, wouldn't it? So going from the black just through to the, the browns. Very simple. Only using a couple of stitches there, but really striking. And if you're giving this as a gift, this could be traditional or it could be tr um, contemporary, shouldn't it? Couldn't it? Shouldn't it? Wouldn't it? <laughs> I could have, I could have, would have, should have. The crazy quilt pillow. So you can use these designs with your sewing machine as well. Oh, a thread ball. Oh, that's a nice idea. So you're actually making something that you're going to use as well. So you've got a thread board to keep your threads in and then that's all in a nice little booklet. Wow. Now you can have a look anywhere you like for this book, but you're only going to be able to buy it here now in the UK. So we'll get it to you quicker than buying it from Illinois, won't we? See, that's that design again on a smaller scale. But having just a, a whole load of samplers, I think, would be such a nice idea. I love that. Oh, and the lavender. Oh, that's a nice idea. Doesn't that look expensive? Now then, if you're going to have a real good old play with this, you're going to need lots of thread. We haven't had them in stock for a long time, but last time we brought you these threads, we sold out almost straight away. But we've got them for you now. So you have a hundred different colours. Something for every type of embroidery project you're ever going to want. Look at all of these. There are three rows of those. Actually, we've got four rows there, haven't we? So much thread. 100 skeins in total. Which means that you can shade as well. So if you wanted to add highlights, um, like you saw with the, uh, the cherries on the wall hanging from the previous hour, just a little bit of white or just a little bit of that icy blue. Only works out at 14 pence a skein. What incredible value that is. But it's so nice to have every colour that you need. If you don't need all of those colours, we have smaller packs for you. <laughs> um, but the value is in the hundred. Oh, it doesn't go off. So, you know, you can have them and store them and keep them, put them in your storage box. But if you wanted to go smaller or variegated, we have those for you as well. Um, so we have brights. All of these colours are in the 100 one. And in here, you have 36 skeins for £9. 36 for 9 99 I'd go for the 100, wouldn't you? You can see you've got the same colours in there. 
but you're just getting so much more of them. But however, that's £9.99 for, uh, for 36. Still a lot there. Still really useful colours for, for summer and autumn, I'd say those are. But it's around about twice the price per skein than going for the 100 pack. But you know, if you want to do that, that's, that's fine. That's fine. Feel free. Um, if you just wanted pastels, we have just the pastels. Actually, there's a lot of the same colours in the 100s. You know, but if you just want the pastels, that's fine. That, again, is £9.99. So if you went for the pastels and you went for the colours together, that would be £19.99 for 72. This is 100. Just saying. However, what's not in the 100 pack is the variegated. I like variegated, particularly when I'm embroidering flowers. Um, lavender in variegated thread looks beautiful because lavender naturally tends to be a little bit lighter on the, on the top than it is on the bottom. And it gives you that shadow. It gives you a depth. If you're embroidering roses, then the reds and the pinks look gorgeous. And if you're very clever with the way that you thread your, your needle, um, you can actually start to embroider darker in the centre of the flower and then lighter towards the edge of the flower without even having to change your thread. So that's a really useful bunch. So I would go for the hundred and the variegated as well. If you do a lot of embroidery that's that's certainly what I would do. That's £9.99. Let me give you a reminder of those hundred threads though while we've got them. Remember we sold out last time. We've got them back in stock. Who knows how long they're gonna last. £14.99. So £19.99 for 72. £14.99 for a hundred. I know what I'd do. In fact, fourteen ninety nine, twenty four ninety nine for everything. Oh, that's that would be my choice. And only one postage all day, of course, of three pounds ninety five. There we go. Um, right, these metallic threads. Really busy for these. Red, silver, greens, and gold. The first time we've ever brought these to you. And it's really busy. Now let me show you. Oh, that wasn't very neat. Oh dear. Oh. <laughs> oh, I've ripped the packet now. I'm going to have to keep them. More like I'm going to have to buy them. Um, go for your box to put those in as well once you start opening them. I, I know that there are ways of pulling the thread out and it just comes like it is now, but it never does at home. Never does that. I always get into a knot and then I end up with a big bird's nest of thread. Um, now these are metallic so they do actually have metal running through them and we have more threads than the regular six. So you can do some very, very fine work with these. So one, two, three, four, there's ten threads in there all together. So normally with um, em embroidery floss you'll have six, this time you get ten. So if you just wanted to use one of those threads and do some very fine work, this is going to last you for such a very long time, isn't it? So there's your green, the silver. We have, oh, they're stuck together. The reds and the gold. So all of your traditional Christmas colours. Even if you're just embroidering a name on a Christmas card or on a gift tag or on a gift bag or personalising something. If you're using your embellisher, then you can use this thread as well. You may need to put some roving yarn over the top to hold it in place, but why not do some very fine work with the embroidery threads? So you've got 16 skeins for £9.99. That's such, again, great value for money, four of each of those. But remember that they are so fine. I just opened up the red one. Look how many threads you're actually getting there that you can use individually. There's 10, splits into 10. And every one of them has that metal core as well. So you can do some very fine work. Or you can do some very thick work. <laughs> fine work or thick work. Up to you. You do what you like. Um, but if you, I would go for the regular threads of some description anyway, because you wouldn't want to embroider the whole thing all the time. But things like, oh gosh, we've got less than 30 left now. Um, if you're just adding a little highlight, so maybe you're embroidering um, some 
red um, poncettias and you just want to put a little bit of a silver highlight around there to look like frost. There is so much you can do. Maybe it's a starry night. There was a starry night bunting panel. And just put little tiny French knots in silver for the stars. That would look amazing. Um, or one of our advent calendars. If you know the ones with the, with the houses, you can put a little bit of detail, like frosting on the window sills. That would look lovely. So you don't actually need very much, do you? These are going to last you for such a long time. So for £9.99, that's quite an investment, isn't it? Um, I do suggest you go for your storage box and spend some time decanting your thread. You're getting 10 D DMC threads included. Those could be any colour. We can't guarantee what they're going to be. Oh, this is sealed up. Must be a new one. Shan't open it. Um, but you can see you've got all of these different compartments. And also, you've got some bobbins. So uh, th there's 100 bobbins in there. <coughs> Excuse me, which means that you can take your thread off here because again when you pull these out Oh, oh mine always get into knots And then but not on it. It's normally the other way around isn't it? Normally things go horribly wrong on air But um, but you can take these out wrap them around the bobbins and then store them individually in these cases For nine pounds ninety nine you probably got nine ninety nines worth of thread um, there's lots more on the website as well, but that's what it's going to look like. I, I, and I'll be honest, I tend to throw a lot of thread away because by the time I've got down to the knot when I'm trying to pull out a piece of thread, I get, I get annoyed with it. So I'll cut the thread off. I should save it for my embellishment, shouldn't I? But I do, I do waste quite a lot of embroidery thread because of that. So get yourself organised. Um, now we've got more coming up in the next show. We have embroidery hoops. We've got, this is brand new for you. That's on the website. We've got brand new fabrics as well, but we're out of time here. Have a look on sewingstreet.com. We'll see you again after the break. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalogue by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello and welcome. We love hearing from you and we really hope that you can follow us on our social media platforms. We've got Instagram, which is at Sewing Street. Uh, we have Facebook. We've got two Facebook pages. One is the Sewing Street TV page and the other one is Sewing Street Fans. All three of these are monitored all the time by our t wonderful team. And if you want to message us on air, drop us a line on either of those three and we'll definitely be able to answer your questions that you may have. If you post on the actual wall, we can perhaps answer there. Otherwise, message us as well. That works really, really well. Thank you so much for being involved and it's only because of this community that we're able to bring you all these different diverse products and to be able to answer your questions that you may have. Another way you can stay in touch with us is by signing up to our newsletter. These newsletters are sent out to you very regularly and they include not only our guest profiles of upcoming guests, but also amazing uh, shows that we've got coming up for you. And if you want to look at the amazing products before everybody else, that's the best way to do it. If you'd like to sign up and you haven't already, the link to follow is www.sewingstreet.com forward slash sign up. You won't regret it. Thank you. 
If you love sewing, then you need the UK's favourite sewing magazine. Every month, you'll receive exclusive patterns. Follow simple step-by-step -step guides suitable for all skill levels to make your own stunning clothes, accessories and more, together with inspiring tips and tricks from industry experts. Join in and discover your love for sewing. Try Love Sewing today and get your first three issues for just £6. <laughs> My favourite piece of kit with the sewing is the sewing with that. Hello, I'm Janice from Birmingham. I specialise in dressmaking. I used to run a children's shop and I love making children's clothes. My mother encouraged me to sew from an early age. When we were young, we did dressmaking in school. My claim to fame was the sewing quarter, but I'm now making also jumpsuits for the ladies and men of all shapes and sizes, and it seems to be going for the festivals around the country. See you on the show! Hi there, welcome back. Now in this hour we're going to be talking about my cow creamer panels. Um, they've been so popular, I've seen so many lovely pictures of the things that you've been making with them, including the one that Dawn's put on the uh, the Facebook page with her, um, her tray mat. Um, there's just some ideas that have been coming out that I didn't even think about, like the, um, the pelmet across the top of the window and blinds and I've seen lots of aprons. I'm so glad that you've been enjoying these as much as I have designing them and making them. These are the ladies that are responsible for the said collection. It's, it's not all of them, um, not all of them on the fabrics. Um, so I just thought I'd bring a few in today because they're, they're very precious to me and uh, I, I didn't want to break them so I don't like to travel with them too often. Um, we've got a couple of options for you to take you through in just a minute but I just wanted to explain my collection. The original cow that I have, um, I haven't brought it, it's far too precious, um, belonged to my great-great-grandmother and has kind of been handed down and I remember my mum telling me that it used to be a special occasion when they were cleaning at grandma's house and she was allowed to clean the cow. That cow has been broken and Evo sticked together so many times I, I can't believe but I, that was the first one of my collection because my mum gave it to me and then you see another one and then somebody doesn't know what to buy you for Christmas so you have another cow and we'll go off on travels and I love going around antique flares and flea markets and things like that and I'll find another one and another one and I've ended up with a collection of something like 30 cows that all hang on hooks across the, um, the, the window in my kitchen so the, these are just some of my favourites. So what we've done is photographed said cows um, digitise the images and then put them onto fabric. So for instance, there's this cow here. Now they've been given names, I didn't give them the names, that was Tom who was the, uh, the designer. But I think what he has done very cleverly is to pick out the flowers here. And yes, it's on the cow there, but it's also on some of the fabrics. And considering this has come from a pottery cow, I think that is the most beautiful fabric. That's one of the panels that's coming up in a second. I'll, I'll show you that later. But if, if I was to bring you this and say, oh, it's a new Liberty fabric, wouldn't you think, oh, it is, isn't it? Um, it really does look designer, but that, that's where the inspiration came from. So these are all printed in the UK. The quality of the cotton is a superior quality cotton because I stamped my feet a bit. And you've got instructions for projects on here as well, like the tea cosy and the kitchen set. Um, oh, I'll go through, I can't remember the names I gave them. I'll go through those in just a second. Um, this is the um, the cow that was used for the um, uh, the tray mat that Dawn made that she put on Facebook. I, I like this. It reminds me a little bit of a llama, and in fact, it's not really a creamer. It's a, it's a vase, um, but she's very aloof. This one, look with the blue eyeshadow. She's very 1970s, very retro. But I just think if if there was going to be a posh cow, then it would be this one. This one, however. You know when um, <laughs> silly animals, silly animals like pheasants, that when you approach them with a car, even when you slow down, they still run towards you. That, 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 I think this is the equivalent of the bovine world. I think she's just a little bit silly 
I don't know why. I don't... It reminds me of the wooden tops somehow. If the wooden tops had a cow with the, with the, the spottiest dog you ever did see, it would look like that, wouldn't it? Um, and again, with this one, Tom's actually taken some of the floral design. In fact, he has with that one as well. On the grey panel, it's the, the pattern on this cow that's been used for the pattern on there as well. It looked a little bit plain, so Tom has put some stitching marks. It's just very clever the way the whole thing comes together, I think, anyhow. Um, that's that one. Oh, that. Okay, so let me show you the panels. Enough of you ladies. I'm going to put you somewhere safe. There we go. I love cows. I think they're so gentle. And I love all animals, but I do love, I do love cows. So, yes, yeah, so we'll move you over there. We want to have a look at the other one. They're all going to come out in this show. Here we go. <laughs> when we first launched these, we were coming up with, with more names than we've actually got on here. And um, Hannah, producer, suggested Pat, Cow Pat. I don't think I've ever cried on air before, so I was just sorry about that show. It just really, I just thought it was, it was so funny. And, and it was a, a, a very odd kind of cow pat. They about just, what? <laughs> cow pat. Anyway, um, shall we have a look at these um, panels first? So with these panels, you're going to be able to make, and I have a plan. This is the pink. You're going to be able to make um, the oven gloves with the backing on them. So this is the pink option. And then um, you're going to be able to make one pot holder and you will be able to make one tea cosy. However, this tea cosy has got some lovely fabric on the inside and you're not really going to see it because it's inside the tea cosy. So if you use some of your own fabric as a lining and you will need your own fabric as binding, you could make another tea cosy using this fabric. The pot holder's got two sides to it. If you used your own plain fabric on the back, maybe even something like this because it goes really well, you're going to be able to make two pot holders. You may need to make your own binding, so you could have a Liberty backing on those. Only the best for my cows. And then with the, um, the oven gloves, you do get the gingham backing and you do get some very nice fabric for lining these with but you don't see that. So you could make one oven glove that looks like this and another one that looks checked, but with the pink floral fabric as the, as the hand bit, as the mitt. You'll need your own lining and you'll need your, uh, your own bias binding as well. Now you'll also need some thermal, and we've actually sold out of it at the moment, but if you have any kind of heat reflective um, wadding, that's what I put inside here. T to be honest, I don't always do that. These, if you use a couple of layers of something like heirloom, um, don't go for a polyester in case it gets very hot in the oven. Um, but even if you're using um, wadding, uh, just ordinary wadding, some wool wadding, that does the trick a lot of the time. I did have, actually, I put, um, years ago, I did a, a demonstration on, on YouTube, a video on YouTube for oven gloves, and I used wadding inside it. And I had so many comments say, well, you can't use that, you've got to use heat reflective. How many times do you take something out of the oven with a tea towel? They're not heat reflective, as long as it's thick enough to stop the heat coming through. So it's being careful, isn't it? It's being responsible and grown up. But with a tea cosy, you just needed something padded, and that's going to help keep the, the heat in anyway. Um, there's your pot holder. Here are your instructions for making up. Yours won't be quite as bent as these. So step-by-step -step instructions with pictures for every step of the way, as you would find in any of my books and um, any of my instructions, because I like things to be nice and clear. And this is your panel. You will need to search the code on the website for this one. You will need QNVC53. Oh, do we need LZ? Why does it say QNV? Oh, you'll need this one up here. LZX is the one that you want, that one. So search for that on the website. I'm moving things out of the way because these panels are huge. Are you ready? Oh, there. So that's what you're getting. So you can see the shapes of everything there. So I think it kind of makes sense. And um, the bias binding is actually cut on the bias. 
and in the corner over here you've got an extra daft cow she's just silly cow that one i think um but that's filling in the space that's a piece of applique so we didn't want to leave a white gap in the what very little you have spare on here so those are your bias binding strips so they're already printed out in the shape that you want them to be they're all labeled as well so you've got oven gloves lining and the pot holder front and the pot holder back um, so all you need to do is cut them out and follow the instructions to sew them back together again you've got quite a few handmade buys uh, as labels as well maybe you want to make a gift tag out of those if you have um, if you're making those as a present and you've actually got two of the ladies as applique pieces as well so you could be making maybe an apron and um, use them on the pocket this is Bessie Clarabelle and Betty Sue I don't know which one's which but I think she looks a bit like a Clarabelle I love the print on her who would have known that she'd be um, an inspiration for fabric so again it's 28 pounds and 99 pence um, but search the code LZXC39 if you wanted to go for that one and again they designed printed in the UK on superior quality of fabric and only the best for my customers you know. I want you to come back again so that's the pink we also have a green which is this one so you've got different cows and prints on here as well so it's not just a different color of the same this is different fabric I shall only do this once so on here You've got the How Now Brown Cows. You've got the aloof one. I think she's Penelope, the posh one down there. Uh, but this is Daisy, Dorothy and Penelope. The very first cow that I had, the one I was telling you about, which is my great, great grandma's, is this little one here. Thankfully, the broken tail hasn't um, transferred onto the picture. So we've got the grey check for the back of your gloves. This is the fabric that was inspired by Penelope down here. But remember, you can make two if you add a little bit of your own fabric. If you are frugal with these, you can stretch them out and get twice the worth out of them, which I think is such a nice idea. I like value for money. I don't know about you. You'll have to search the code for this one as well which is YMXC23, or if you find it easy, if you don't want to go searching for anything or you can't write down the number, you can dial 0800 114433 and just say to the operator, I want one of those cow creamer panels that's on at the moment. Hmm. Um, if you search cows, it comes up. Just put, just put cow into the search bar and it'll come up. Why is cow an insult? I think they're lovely. I would, I would not be offended. <laughs> oh, so it, interestingly, on a jewellery maker and sewing website, there is nothing else cow related. How surprising is that? I, I would have thought, you know, cow beads, cow chains, cow coloured threads. In instructions and everything included in there as well, remember, for your £28.99. So you love the prints, but you don't want to make anything for your kitchen. You've already got some oven gloves and you've already got tea cozies and pot holders. What you could probably do with is just some panels with just the prints on, couldn't you? Then you can make what you like. You could make aprons with them. Um, you could maybe even make table runners. If you've got your sets already and you've made them up and you do want to make a pelmet or a border for your Roman blinds, then you're going to need some extra fabrics, aren't you? Well, we've got those for you as well, of course. So that's just four joined together with a little bit of grey fabric. In retrospect, I wish I'd have used the Liberty, but we didn't have that then. Um, so the pink panel is this one. So you can create whatever you like with these. Um, we don't have as many of these left though. Now the, the reason I asked for the print to be long and thin, because normally with the print you expect it to go across the fabric, don't you? I wanted to these, these to be up and down so that you can make full length aprons out of them without having to join together. Um, the piece in the centre, all of the cows are facing each other so you can actually just 
Put some backing on that and quilt it and you've got a nice sized little table runner. Um, you can cut them out individually if you wanted to. On the side here, so I've got that a bit creased up, we've got two longer panels which I'm imagining you're going to cut into strips. Um, but again you could easily make another um, set of oven gloves out of those. You could maybe use the cows individually on their own um, as a cushion panel. Maybe to match your, I'd, I'd love to see a kitchen actually that's all been decorated with the cow fabric. I think it's very appropriate, isn't it? So again, this is £19.99. It is huge. It's 140 by 85 centimetres. Are you a cow collector as well? To be honest, I've never come across another one. I've had pig collectors and frog collectors and dog collectors and cat collectors, but I've not, I've not met anybody else that collects cows. Have you seen the cow parade cows? That's another thing that I collect cow wise. Um, they are, um, it was an exhibition a few years ago of life size cows that were made. That, that, they weren't real life size cows, so I don't know what they're made out of. Um, probably fiberglass. And they were given to artists to paint. And then they had a, um, a whole display of these. Um, it did a tour around, around the country. I remember going to Oxford Street, and part of it was closed because they had this whole cow parade of cows. And these cows were in fancy dress, they were wearing hats. They were, there was one of them, in fact, one of the tiny ones I have is a bumblebee. So, yes, I've got quite a collection of cow parade cows as well. It's all about the, I've got a house for the cow. That's your pink. Apparently there's a concrete cow in Milton Keynes. I didn't know Milton Keynes was famous for concrete cows. Send, send me a picture if you're there. I'd love to see a concrete cow. This is the green option, so you've got the same deal, you've got your long slim panels, which means you can make your full size apron. Um, maybe patch pockets on the front with the large square ones. This is um, Penelope, Daisy and Dorothy. That one right in the centre is my original one. She has got a few more flowers on her here because she's very plain. And then you've got the check and the flowers which have been taken from posh Penelope on the end there. And that again is £19.99. and pence. I love that if you have a look on the, um, the Stone Street Facebook page, Dawn has put a picture in there. It's just, this is, oh, it's Dorothy, sorry, that's Dorothy, um, gracing the kitchen on a tray. She says she loves her. I think you know that Dorothy was actually a Laura Ashley. I'm sure she's a Laura Ashley. She, she's, a, she's a very upmarket cow, is that one. So, yeah, some of your pictures. I'd love to see what you've been making with these already. Um, oh, more, more rag. Have you just got up? Morning. She had a busy night. Um, go and, yep, Sandra. Okay, that's the Facebook page. If you want to send me a message or send me any pictures, that's where I am. Or you can drop us an email, which is studio at sewingstreet.com. Um, so the easiest way if you're ordering on the website is search cow. Go into the search bar at the top, just type in cow and it'll bring you up all of the different options and colour options that we have for you there. So that's a, that's a good way to, to find them. Okay, what shall we do? Shall we? So, so I started this, which is the pink from the panels. Needs a, needs a bit of a press, it's been folded up for a while. But then I got as far as this and that's as far as I got. So I think we'll have a bit of backing fabric on there and maybe do some binding as well with some liquor, some dyeing to use this. So there's the Liberty. And I think that'll just finish it off and the, the colour's perfect to go with my cows. Um, right, so we'll need an iron. I'm just going down into the cellar to plug this in. Excuse the top of my head for a second. Can you just plug that in, Dad? Yeah, that's the... Yeah. Salaman's done that for me and I'll need an ironing board in a minute when that's heated up. So I've already got some, that is actually thermalam on the back but it could be, um, it could be anything you like as long as it's got a little bit of padding so I'm not going to stretch the table. Thank you Jo. And then I'll just give that a press because it has been folded up for a while in a second. I have some grey fabric that I'm going to use. Doesn't Jane leave a mess down here as well? It's as full as I know. It doesn't tidy up after self at all. I did have some grey fabric but I think uh, oh, that's gone. oh there we go. I can't blame her for that one. 
So that's the fabric that's going on the pattern. Am I talking to myself? Do apologise. It's the thing being, we're working on sewing streets, just like being at home. Only I'm not selling myself stuff at home. Right. I do have voices in my head at home, though. Just like I have now, it's a little bit weird. Every now and again it goes, cow pat. Oh. I wanted to design an alarm clock for presenters, which would be, I think it'd be really funny. Because um, getting up at the crack of dawn is, is very difficult sometimes. Unless you had an alarm clock that just went, and you're live in 10, 9, and it's, oh, okay, okay, well, let's go. Wouldn't you? That'd work, wouldn't it? It would, it would, yeah, it would only be for presenters, really, though, wouldn't it? On live presenters, for that matter. <laughs> or astronauts, I'm hearing. Same, same kind of genre, really, isn't it? Ast astronauts. And... I'm just going to press this one as well, then I'll stop. Cutting down to size. So this is one of our solid greys. It does go very well with both of the colours, actually. I'm just, I don't like, I don't like creases in stuff. <laughs> so, can't work with a crease. Right, so this is silver if you wanted to add it to your order. Remember, if you've already ordered anything, one of the panels or the embellishing machine or anything like that, you're not paying any extra postage. So that's only £3.49. I wouldn't order this on its own, even unless you don't mind just paying more than that for your postage. But if you've already ordered anything from us today, then it's, it's no postage whatsoever. Um, the liberties that we had for you in the first hour, these were brand new. Some of them have sold out already. But we do have a little bit of this one left. I haven't sold out of this one yet, and the pink goes so well with the pink option of the panels. In fact, I'll leave that folded in half, because that's just going to be my binding. So I've got plenty enough for that. And I'm going to use a 680 as well. Because I think it's my new favourite machine. All right, so we'll do that in preparation for binding. Oh, I saw such a funny sign on... Um, there's, there's a shop in Stamford, which is near where I live, and they, they put little signs up outside the window to cheer people up as they walk past. And it just reminded me with the steam for this. And it was just on a, on a, a board outside. And it said, um, um, due to COVID-19, have you been forced to wear a face mask and glasses? In which case, you may be due for condensation. It actually made me laugh out loud when I saw it. It was so funny. Because it happens, doesn't it? OK, so I'm going to use... I'm going to use a little bit of 505 spray to stick this on here. It's so well prepped. Um, oh, I'll have to join. I shan't do it all the way. Thank you. I shan't do this all the way around because I need to join it together and I wanted to concentrate a bit more on binding on this one. So let's put a bit of spray on here. In a well ventilated room, Away from your sewing machine, we do have the doors open in the garage, by the way. So, it's, it's, it's quite nice, isn't it, to get to, to this kind of stage with something, because I never finish anything in a show. I shan't finish this, but, um, <laughs> but I can get a little bit further on than I did in the, in the show before. I must do more half-finished projects. Right, so I'll trim this down to the same size. It's only the backing fabric, so there will end up being a join here somewhere, but I don't mind that because no one's going to see the back. I'm going to use my inch ruler because I will be cutting some binding in a second, but for this stage, I'm just trimming the backing fabric so it's the same size as the top. And actually, while I'm there, I can square this off a little bit as well. It's not quite square. didn't trim that down previously. Let's do a two inch border. Because no matter how careful you are, things move a little bit sometimes, do they not? So let's turn around there. So I'm just cutting this two inches from 
the edge of the cows to square it off. There's quite a lot coming off, but I think it'll be nice. Move this down. May as well trim it all the way down. So I'm just trying to feel the edge of my board. I was going to be cutting into the table there. That would get me in trouble. Right, so again, two inches from the edge of the cows. And this is the Janome ruler that I'm using. It's very nice. It's very clear, and I can actually see the letters and the num oh, sorry, the numbers on it, with them being in black and in pink. And it matches my cows. So let's. Again, I shan't trim that end because I need to join that together. That's not very straight. And then I'll turn it around and just trim the bottom as well. So it's all nice and square. Love that crunching sound when you're cutting through fabric. The nice sharp blade. Right, I'll just take that off the end. Like so. Okay. So now I need to cut some binding. So I'll put that to one side for a second. And this is where my rotary cutter ruler and mat come in handy. So although my fabric is wider than this, I can get it started. So I'm going to use the 45 degree line on my cutting mat for my first cut. So let's square this up. So if you're not sure, the straight edge of your fabric, it's always the selvage. It's always this bit. That's the straightest bit. I'm going to chop that off afterwards. I'm not going to use that in any of the pieces that I'm using, but that's the bit that I'm going to line up against the grid on my mat to make sure it's square. So I'm not using the markings on the ruler at the moment. I'm just using the mat and I'm going to chop straight across here. Like so. And I'll save that for some felting later. Then I've got two choices. I can either use the marks on my board or I can use the marks on my ruler. I'm going to use my ruler, so I'll need to flip this over. So it doesn't matter whereabouts on the mat this is now. I just want to cut two inches from here. So line up the two inch mark with the edge of your fabric. And then cut. And there's my strips. This is now going to get too big to cut in one big long go. So I'm going to fold it in half so that the edges that I've just cut line up and then use the two inches on my ruler again, doesn't matter this is upside down, and then carry on cutting. I had a message from Helen, hi Helen. And she says, hello Debbie, hello Helen. Um, oh, she also collects cow creamers. Oh, we'll show us your pictures, Helen. She has the best collection of cow creamers. Was, oh, was owned by Ken or Dank. Kellen, Kellen Orjanko in Dundee. Well, I didn't know that. And she gave her entire collection to a, a museum somewhere in England. Um, and she had thousands of them. Oh, makes my 30 look menial. She's ordered the panel for a table run. Oh, how lovely. Oh, like-minded cow people. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that on TV. So I'm chopping off my selvages now. I don't want those there. Um, to be honest, I'm cutting this on the bias to show you how to do bias binding. But with um, the cow creamers, it's a straight line. So you don't need bias binding. If you're cutting anything that goes around curves, you will need a bias binding. If you're new to sewing, so what are we talking about bias binding? Why does it need or not need to be cut on the bias? Basically, you have a weave of a fabric which goes up and down. So there's the, there's the weave and the weft, and that's how fabric's made. And it gives a little bit, but it doesn't give very much. When you cut on the bias, you're practically turning this over to a 45 degree angle, and then it'll move. And that means that you have stretch in the fabric like we have here, quite a bit, as it turns out. But that means, so this way, like warp and weft way, very little give, very little stretch, and that's exactly how it should be. 
bias cut, you get stretch. And that means that when you take this around a curve, it doesn't pucker. You can actually stretch it to go around a curve. Um, bias cutting is used a lot in dressmaking as well for the same reason. You, if you're making quite a tight fitting dress with no closures, no zips, no buttons, no fastening, you can have trouble getting into it. But if that fabric is cut on the bias, it'll stretch a little bit. And you quite often see dresses that have lovely floaty skirts, but no fastening. That's what, that's what bias is. Um, oh, well over half the stock of the Garden Trail sold out now, by the way, so if you want to order. But it works really well with the panels. It's exactly the right colour pink. So that's my bias binding. Joining it together, these are cut, I'll join a couple of the longer ones. I've got a 45 degree angle cut here. And in, in fact, let's make that straight. So we've got that. So what would seem obvious would be to just make a seam and sew it together. The thing is when you do that with most fabrics it would be obvious. Your eye is drawn to a straight line. If you join these together at an angle, your eye is not drawn to that angle, it glides over it. So that's why you see bias binding joins at, joined at an angle like that. So the what would seem obvious would be so right so I've lined those two up now I need to sew them right right sides together so let's line up the edge there okay and then let's sew so let's see what happens that that would seem obvious wouldn't it to sew it that way so I'll have a quarter of an inch seam allowance not really important on this but that's what we'll do and so so you've been very careful you've lined up your edges all's looking good but then when you turn it over, there's a step in it. So that didn't work quite so well, did it? So we don't do it that way. So what you'll do, let's just take that off, is to overlap them. So this doesn't have to be a 45 degree angle. It can be square, so we could do it on this side as well. And you're going to overlap them right sides together, like so. I like to leave a little bit of a gap and we're going to sew from this corner to this corner. Um, be careful when you're doing this because it's very easy to sew that to that and that's just not going to work at all. It's got to be that side to that side. So if you have your fabrics coming from the left and down and then you sew from the left to the right, you can draw a line on that if you like to make it straight. But let's take that back to the machine again and sew. And then when you open it out, you've got a perfect join. Obviously there's some wastage here, so we'll chop that away. So if I cut back that across and that, then I've got the perfect lines. And again, that diagonal doesn't really stand out very much at all. Then we're gonna need to iron it. So a bias binding maker would be very nice but it is quite easy to do it without because we haven't got any. Can't sell you one of them. So I'll need to fold to the centre, then to the centre again. I know we went through this the other day, but maybe, maybe you missed it. Um, if you want to use a bit of spray starch on some fabrics, that helps to keep it in place. And I'm making a single fold bias binding, even though I'm folding over twice. So I've got two inches wide binding, fabric, and this is going to end up giving me a half inch border because you fold it over four times. So crease down the center. This fabric is going to sell out by the way. Um, I'm folding this long edge to the center first. So it is quite quick, just mind your fingers as you're going. Like that. Your iron finger would be useful if you have one, if you're a bit worried about getting too close to your thumb as you're ironing. So, and then we'll turn it around this way. Lots of you are searching cow on the website we see. Oh, jolly good. I'm glad you love these panels. It's always a little bit worrying when you design something that no, no one's gonna like it. How could you not like cows though? 
go down here. And then we'll fold the whole lot in half again. Now a double, a single fold bias binding, although you're folding this over twice, is called so because when I fold this over again, well that's hot, on the edge here, which is the edge of the quilt, is a single fold. If I was binding an actual quilt, I'd do a double fold bias binding, which is the one piece of fabric folded in half. So although it's only folded once, that's double fold. Because when this goes around the edge of the fabric, you're going to sew the edge here and then wrap it around. So you've actually got two layers of fabric on the edge. That's why that's double fold. So fold it once, that's the double fold. Fold it twice and that's a single fold. Just to explain if you weren't aware. Now with the um, oven gloves and everything that I made, I, normally I like to hand sew on one side. I just find it very relaxing. I enjoy doing it and I love the nice crisp finish that it gives you. But if you don't fancy a bit of hand sewing or you want to make something a bit quicker, I would sew from the back. In fact, there's a couple of ways you can do it. So let's move that out of the way. So, because I folded this already and ironed it, I could simply slip this around the whole thing and clip it. And then very carefully sew quite close to the edge here. The only problem with this, and I'm sure there's some very talented people out there that can do that straight away, is when you turn it over, it's not always in exactly the same position on the back as it is on the front. Fine if you're never going to see the back, if you're making something for yourself and you're not too concerned about that, as long as your stitches are straight on the front, that's, that's absolutely fine. Don't, you know, it doesn't matter about the back so much. But if this is going to be a gift or if it's something that you're going to sell, and yes you can, don't mind at all, please don't sell the panels on their own, but you can sell what you make, um, I would... I'd hand sew. So I'd start off lining the edges up here and sew in that crease and then wrap this over the edge of my fabric and hand sew the back and that's going to be the neatest way to do it. But if I wanted to machine sew all the way around, I'd do that from the back because then my top stitches are going to be at the front. So let's do it that way. I'm not going to neaten the end on this one because we're just going to look at this. So edge to edge here, pin it or clip it if you want to, and just sew in that crease mark there. And I'm going to mitre the corner, but from the back. So let's go over here, knocking my clips off. And again, for something like this, you don't need bias binding, you just need some binding. So it does take quite a lot of fabric and you normally have a lot of joins. Um, and with straight fabric, you probably won't need to do half as many joins. But when you do join it, I would still um, join it on a diagonal. So I'm literally just sewing in that crease mark there with the edges together. Don't pull it, because there's no need to on this. We're not going around a curve, and the fabric will stretch. I'm going to come into the corner. Here's one of my friction pens. I'm just going to mark this so you can see where I'm going. So the distance here is half an inch. There's the edge of my fabric. I want to stop half an inch from the edge of the fabric. So I'll mark that. You don't need to do this every time, but just so you can see. Edge of fabric, half an inch in. I'm going to stop sewing there. And, whoops. Let's go up here. Stop at the mark. Reverse back a couple of stitches to lock that in place and literally take your work out of the machine. And then let's turn this around. I'll have a couple of clips there actually. So I'm going to line up the raw edges again. So I've stopped sewing there. I need to fold this over so that that edge is meeting. And this gives me a nice little perfect triangle in the corner. So let's hold that together there. 
and then we'll carry on sewing down this line here. Those clips, by the way. Yeah, fantastic price. And again, let's sew down here. That will do. So normally I go all the way around with that. And then when you come to turning this over to the right side, we did all of this the other day, but it's from the right side to the wrong side. Now we're going from the wrong side to the right side. Fold it over and there's your lovely little mitre. But this is all on the back, okay? So let's turn it over. And fold this around to the front. Now, if you find what, what I want to do is you can see the, the stitch line where I've sewn the the back of the binding on here. I want to overlap that very slightly. So if you need to trim any of this down, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry about it. You may need to do that. Things tend to grow occasionally when you're sewing with them, particularly when you're using lots of layers like this. So not a problem. You might not need to, but if you do, do that. And oh, noisy scissors. And then fold this over and clip. Have some more of those. That red one's mine, by the way. I want it back. Um, these clips were the early bird special from yesterday. If you didn't see them, they're £9.99 for a pack of 50. We do have offers on a pack of 100 and a pack of um, 150 as well. But the price will go up at the end of the week. But when you consider that's my branded one, you wouldn't know the difference. I think, and I don't know, um, you know, sometimes when you, you go and buy a TV set or a vacuum cleaner or something and you think, actually, that's exactly, that cameras particularly, that's exactly the same design as that, but it's a different brand. Hmm? You see it with clothing sometimes. So you may see a coat in a fashion store or a dress and you think, oh, or fabric that's been used, exactly the same, but they've got different brands to them. So they're made in the same place. I'm not saying that with these because I don't know, but you know. Right now here in the corner, I want to fold that over and mitre it just like I did on the back. And it wants to do that. It's, it's quite happy to go into a really nice little mitered corner. So let's stick a clip right on, whoops, right on top of that. Couldn't pin that. And then we'll carry on wrapping that around. So just to remind you, oh, this, this colourway, by the way, for the, um, the cows, the pink, is the most popular one. And just to remind you that you need to search cow if you go onto the website. And you'll see all of the different options for you there. Okay, so that's that. So just wrapping over that initial stitch line just slightly, and then we'll sew. Um, extras you may need are Thermalam. We don't have any in stock at the moment. Or any kind of heat reflective wadding would be fine. Um, to be honest, with a table runner like this, I'm not going to put any pots on it. I'll move it out of the way when it comes to, to eating. So I'll maybe put a fruit bowl on it. Now I'm going to sew quite close to the edge of the binding. And because this is the top, I can see where I'm going. So I know that it's going to be nice and neat. And I'm just hoping that I'm going to catch that from the back. Uh, let's see if I've got a... That will do. Hold that there. So this is the Hera marker. We've got those on the website as well. Just so I don't have to get my fingers too close. And then we'll go around the corner. The clips are excellent for keeping all of this flattened in place without pinning. Because when you can think about it, with the binding, that's four layers of fabric. Your backing fabric and your top fabric is six layers of fabric. And then the wadding in the, wid in the whittle, in the middle, you may have problems actually pinning them all together. Okay, that will do. Let's see how we're looking. So now I'm nice and neat here. I've got a lovely mitered corner there. And when I turn it over the, to the back, because I've sewn really close to the edge, 
I've just caught this. And because I've done it this way, I've only got one row of stitches on the back of, as well. So it's kept all very nice and neat. So obviously you're going to do that all the way around. But that'll be another, that's, that's another half finished demo, isn't it? So I can finish that in another show as well. Oops. Right, let me give you a reminder. Just making sure there's 50 going back in. I'd hate you to have a packet at home that's only got 49 because the first thing you're going to do is count them, isn't it? Right, so that will be finished at a later date. So I may need to hang on to all of these. I'll, I'll just hang on to this Liberty fabric. Right, you go there. Let me give you a reminder. So this is the pink panel that I was just using. And all I used was the squares in the center. So I've still got enough fabric at the end that I can make an apron with like the one behind me. And I've still got two strips of fabric and a few extra cows that I can make some other projects with as well. It's 100% cotton. It's um, printed in the UK. It's designed in the UK based on my actual collection of cow creamers. And I'm just, I'm just really pleased with it. I love the colours and I just love the, the designs. And I, I do think it's very kitcheny. I wouldn't use it in... I don't know. No, I wouldn't. I'd just use that in the kitchen, I think. But that's where my cows are, so that's what I associate them with. So £19.99. The cotton is a superior quality of cotton. Um, it's not coarse. It's not scratchy. It's a very tight weave. It's cotton poplin, um, but it's a nice heavy weight of cotton poplin. So it's not, it's not see-through. It's really nice. So that's the pink option. Oh, Amanda's messaged in. Uh, she says, hi, Debbie. Hi, Amanda. Um, Thank you. Oh, thank you so much for showing you how to put binding on using a machine mesh method. Uh, not a problem. She's, she's been waiting to see it. She's made a sewing machine mat and she wanted to try it out. That's a good idea. That's what I did with that one. Um, so I think a lot of the time with, with quilts and quilting, it can be very niche. Um, it can be quite elitist if I say so. And um, it can be very challenging or daunting for a new quilter because when you say quilt, you think, oh, quilt, I'll never be able to complete something like that. This is a quilt. This sewing machine mat is a quilt. That table runner is a quilt. So if your ambition is to make something amazing that's going to go over a, um, a super king size bed, this is a good place to start to practice your skills because applying binding to a sewing machine mat is no different to applying binding to a quilt. There's lots of different ways of doing it, but it's all the same method. So, and if you're making um, the, um, the set, those are all quilted as well. This is the green option. And they're different cows, so it's not just an alternate colour, they are different cows. Um, remember to search cow on the website. So there's Dorothy, we've got Dorothy and Penelope and Daisy for these ones. Again, at £19.99. So that's that one. Shall we have a look at the... Oh, I've got hair on my eye. I had a hair in my eye last week. Um, right, so that's that. Now, with the, the set, um, this is the pink one. I made squares on here, one and a half inches square. And this is what I was saying about the quilting. Um, this is a quilt, this is a quilt, this is a quilt. It's not a bed quilt, it's not a wall hanging, but it's quilted, so it's a quilt. Um, I'll show you how I actually drew the lines on there as well, because that's really, really easy. And you can do more so. And these are 45 degree angle, 90 degree, 90, 40, 90 degree, I don't know. Um, 90 degree angles. <laughs> So I'm just, I'm just talking to myself, it's a bit silly. Um, let's have a go with 60 degree. So obviously you'd put these out normally. Jane's made such a mess over here. I'm going to have a word with her when she comes in the next hour. She comes in and just trashes everything and walks out and expects everybody else to clean up after them. <laughs> let's do the tea cosy. I'm not sure if Jane can actually see a TV. Oh, she's got a phone, hasn't she? And so we can talk about anybody in here because all the guests are outside, but they may have phones, so maybe not. We shan't talk about Jane when she's not here. But probably mess she makes. Um, right, so let's have a red friction pen because I think that'll stand out nicely. 
and I want to make a 60 degree angle. So these are going to be more diamond shapes than squares. So if that was my straight across there, I want to find the centre point so that this is nice and even. So that's 14 and a half. So I need seven and a quarter, which is here. So that's the middle. And then I'm going to use the 60 degree, or it could be the 30, and it's that one there, look. So let's put this against the bottom. So I know this isn't square, but if it were square, that's how it would look. And we'll do our first line here. And then one and a half inches seems to be a nice size, but you could go smaller if you wanted to, or larger. Let's do a two inch and we'll cover it quicker. And you're going to go all the way across, now just using the two inch mark on the ruler. So these pens really stand out. I have tried on this fabric before now, and these friction pens don't mark it. And then we can go back in the opposite direction. Obviously, I'd normally turn that around and draw the lines that way. You do get four colours in the bundle if you're going to go for friction pens. And then I want to do this in the opposite direction. So again, there's my 60. So I'm going to flip the ruler over back to the centre. So my 60 degree line is straight across the bottom there. And do my first line. And then we'll do two inches from there. And like so. Whoops, that went a bit off. It's a good job I've got a friction pen. I can just iron that away. That's that. And then back in this direction. So this time, instead of having boxes, I've actually got diamond shapes. And that's just, again, using the markings on the ruler. It's, it's really, really easy. And then sew over the top of them. If you wanted to make those inch wide, then you can just go in between those and you're going to end up with some smaller diamond shapes. You don't, you don't have to quilt these. I just think it's nice when you do. Well, that's quite nice as well, actually. Have a play with them. It gives a really nice shop bought finish. And the, it is a little bit extra time consuming. Oh, when you're um, sewing over these, by the way, <laughs> you, you'll get to the stage where you can't see where, the, where you've sewn everywhere. So just turn your work over and you'll be able to see any gaps from the back because you never get all of them. So again, that's just making one inch diamonds. That would look really nice instead of your two inch diamonds. I wouldn't go any bigger than two inches on, on little bits like this. So you can imagine that quilted, that would look lovely, wouldn't it? Really different. Um, right, because it is a friction pen, though, I want to take that to it because this isn't mine, so I can't really say. So I would um, put your wadding behind there, whether it's the thermalam or um, whatever it is that you're using. See, they're all gone now. It is like a magic trick, isn't it? I can very faintly see a bit of a line very, very faintly, you wouldn't even notice. But you remember, you're sewing over the top of that. But if you are concerned, do a little test on whatever fabric that you're using, first of all. You will have the black, the red, the blue, and the green for your £11.96. And remember, you can use these on paper as well. So if you're marking out patterns... Oh, I think I've knocked the red off the front. Oh, there, I know it's next to me. So on paper, they've got an eraser on the end. So you'll scribble on your paper. You won't scribble. You'll be doing something very artistic and, and defined. Oh, look, there's a mi oh, mistake. Um, and then you can rub it off. Because it's actually the heat from the friction that removes them. If it's on fabric, then that's going to be the easiest way to do it. Easy. Now, those are our early birds. So while we have stock for those now. Right. So... These are the bundles with the instructions, so this is the kit. With the kit, you will be able to make, this is the, that's the green details on your screen, but the, the finished samples are in the pink. Different cows, different colours, but same projects. So you'll be able to make a tea cosy with cows on both sides and pretty fabric on the inside as well. You'll be able to make a pot holder with cows on both sides and you'll be able to make the oven gloves 
with really lovely fabric even on the lining. On your panel, these are all identified. You will have your bias binding on there. You can stretch them out and make two of everything if you add your own backing fabric. Um, so this is the green option. So this time your cows are these two. I can't remember what, that, what, what, were, they, what were they called. Um, Daisy, Dorothy and Penelope, these ones. You choose whatever you like. Um, so we've got the oven mitts in these. So that's the difference. Look, that's the pink and that's the green. And then the main part of the oven gloves is going to be the green cow. So that's, that's my posh llama looking cow as opposed to this one which has the different coloured cows on it. That's the pink. That's the green. And then the tea cosy, where are you, is down here. So we've got a loof cow and there she is again. Um, and these bits are your lining. This one here is an extra, she's filling in a gap. So you could cut her out and use her as a piece of applique on something that you're making already, maybe a cushion cover or a pocket on an apron. And this one here is also a piece of applique. So that's, I didn't want to sell you plain white fabric, what's the point? Um, so all of the gaps are filled in with little handmade labels or spare applique pieces as well. Um, so there's your green. The pink one is the one that the sample's made up of in pink and green. Have a look on the website, but search cow. Normally when you go on our website, you'll see all of the products of the show underneath, but these aren't there. So you will need to go into the search bar and just put cow in there and it'll come up. Otherwise, you can ask the call centre when you phone 0800 001 4433. Now then, coming up in the next hour, Jane's going to be back again. Um, the embellishing machine sold out completely. Hopefully our buyers have been working on her while she's been off for the last hour and 15 minutes. And um, But in the next hour, she's going to be bringing us the 680 sewing machine and the 780 sewing machine. So if you've got any questions, if you've got the machines already, and you think, well, while Jane's there, I'm going to ask her this, I'll ask her to show me that, or you're just in the market for a fabulous new machine, stay with us for a couple of minutes. If you'd like to get in touch with us during our live show and send in any messages or any questions, then you can do it on studio at sewingstreet.com. Alternatively, you can message us on our official Facebook page. Hi, I'm Rosie Wells. My name's Poppy and I'm a nutritional therapist. Hi, I'm Ruth Lynette and I can't wait to join you all on the brand new Gemporia Lifestyle channel. If you're a fan of primal living, you're going to adore what's around the corner. What is lifestyle? Lifestyle is healthy habits. Feeling good, it's about looking great. Making sure that we're taking good care of ourselves inside. And it's about the life that you lead and the home that you live in. All of this is why I'm so excited. We've got the most wonderful team. Homeware deals and primal deals under one roof on one channel. I can't wait to share this brand new channel with you. So we'll see you soon on Gemporia Lifestyle. Gemporia Lifestyle, coming soon to Freeview Channel 74 and Gemporia.com. Would you like to take part in our weekly competition? If you do, then all you have to do is head to the Sewing Street fan page group on Facebook. Post your picture of your make. Myself, Debbie Shaw and John Cole Morgan love looking at all of your makes every week. We pick our favourite and announce the winner every Friday live on the show. Happy sewing and good luck. Hello, my name is Sally Stevens. I'm from Worcestershire, a little town called Upton upon Severn, which is a lovely little riverside town. And not far from there, I also have a little sewing studio, so I can work and leave all my mess left out um, when I'm preparing projects and quilts and so on. My speciality is, in fact, quilting, patchwork and quilting, and I probably started that when I was about 14 years ago. So as I often joke, that was only seven years ago. In fact, it was rather a lot longer, but I've always enjoyed crafting and patchwork really hooked me and I love it. So now then, what can I tell you? Some 
something you may not realise about me is that although lots of you have seen me many, many times on, um, on sewing TV and at classes, because I, I teach as well, um, I also do a lot of unpicking. So don't be afraid ever. If you have to unpick things, so do we. It's not a problem. We all have to start somewhere. And sometimes you get a bit cocky and think, oh, I can just do that without pinning or without this. And then you think, ah, I should have paid attention to my own words. So some sewing tips for you. That's one. Keep a, a seam ripper handy. That will always be your friend. And um, another one that I think is very important, whether you're a, a beginner or more experienced, when you're sewing something, particularly for the first time, a new technique, slow down. There's no rush. It's not a race. Have a little practice with spare fabrics if you've got them before you use your best fabric that you've just purchased so that you get your techniques just right. But also slow down, take your time, watch what you're doing, think about what you're doing and read the instructions. That's always very useful. So what can I say? I've been asked to say what my claim to fame might be. And I would have to say, in all honesty, being on Sewing Street. Hello again and welcome back. Now this is going to be a really exciting hour because we've put together our two most, well, the kind of the machines that most people dream of owning. So these are both high spec, high end sewing machines. James is going to be with me again in just a second. We've got some really special offers for you. We've got reduced prices on the 780 um, and we've got some extras for you as well. So I'm so looking forward to this. If there's anything that you want to ask, it's studio at sewingstreet.com. If you've got one of the machines already and think, you know, I just don't get this or I need to, this explained a little bit more, then do come and ask the question within the live hour. For, so for the next hour while Jane's here as well or you can of course put us a post on your on our Facebook page and let us know what you think to your machine or is this one of these two the machine of your dreams then come and let us know why what, what you've been making what are you doing what are you up to why did you buy it what, what what was it for you that said right that's going to be the machine for me so again we've got the both of them here we've got the 680 and we've got the 780 this is the 780 plus that comes to you with a reduction in price. Oh yes. So your normal price and your previous price, it has been at £2,679. Today is £49. No, I, I, I think that was wrong. <laughs> That was a circular sewing device that we're going to bring in you later. Oh, it's a good job you didn't get on the phones really quickly then. Um, it's £1,999. So you've, you've got almost, well, heading on to a £1,000 saving, haven't you, um, if you order this right now. So again, Joan's going to take you through shortly the whys and the wherefores, the differences between the two, um, and what these machines are actually capable of. And of course, all the little bits and bobs and the extras that go with them. But we'll go through that with Jane in just a second. Look at all those stitches. So that's the 780 plus sewing machine. But we also have the 680 plus sewing machine in the show for you as well. Which is this one. They're both lovely machines. Now, these are the kind of the machines that are just in the studios that we get to use um, whenever we want to. This is the machine of choice for so many guests here on Sewing Street because they get a choice of what they like to work with and they, they just seem drawn to this one. Um, this is £1,099 with only £3.95 postage. Um, they do come with extras. You've got your knee lifters. You've got a whole selection of feet that comes with the machine. And surprisingly simple to use. I know a lot of people are daunted by all of these buttons and things that are going on with the machines. But you know, I, I never have quite got my head around how the timer works on my cooker. Never set the clock, I just haven't got a clue. But these machines, really very simple to use. Don't, don't be phased, don't be put off by them. So that's the 680 plus at 1,099 pence. So if you know that you want one already, have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. And again, if you've got any questions, I know you're going to have loads. Do come through to us in the, in the show um, on info, info? Where did that come from? Studio at sewingstreet.com. And of course, any of the bits and bobs there are going to be on the website as well. So if you wanted to order tools and fabrics and things like that, extra feet for your machine, cutting mats, rulers, we've got a whole genome section for you there as well. And you say, well, hang on a minute, these are Elna. 
We shall explain a little bit about what's going on there as well. So you may recognise the name Elna, you may recognise the name Janome, um, but uh, the, the two are very much one and the same. But Jane will explain that shortly as well. Okay, um, we have some news as well. We sold out of the embellisher earlier on today. We've got some more back in stock again. We haven't got the same bundle that we had earlier on. When you do meet Jane again, we've managed to disguise the bruises very well. And we have got a great deal for you. So if you missed out earlier, you do still get the extension table with it. Um, and you do still get your extra needles and things like that. But the, um, the, the, the free DVDs have now gone. So you still get a fantastic bundle, but just without the DVDs. So have a look on the website on sewingstreet.com. Don't miss out on these. We've actually got the same amount of stock as the stock we had this morning. So the chances are it's going to go really, really quickly. It's just the DVDs that aren't there. But if you need inspiration, of course, as Jane said earlier, there's, there's always YouTube. So we'll have a look at that later on if we have time. Um, so if you want to place an order, there's a couple of ways of doing that. So have a look at this and we'll see you again in a minute. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. So ooh, we've got two of our, our higher end again. sewing machines. Yeah, yeah. Hello again. Yeah. Oh, there's one. Thank you for the embellisher business. That's okay. I just went and twisted a few arms. Oh, you twisted off. their arms? Oh, you, you twisted mine and then I, then, then I twisted theirs. No, thank yeah. you for that. So have a look at yeah. the website for the embellisher. Mm -hmm. Yeah, two, two of our most high-end sewing machines. They are. They're both absolutely fabulous machines, but there's quite a few differences between them. It's quite nice to compare them sometimes. Yeah on the same show normally we'll just do a show on this and a show on the 680 plus so the 780 plus is the top end sewing machine um it's got a much longer throat space here right they're both nine millimeter machines and it's just the different features that are on the 780 plus a lot of it okay so um let me have a look and see we're gonna have to just jiggle around here somehow i'm trying to find the lid openers on the other end <laughs> to, get, to get this up here we go there we Lovely. go we'll do it now there we go so you can see we've got the whole range of stitches there. We've got two alphabets, all the different bits and pieces. Um, we can actually switch on if you can. There we go. It's all a little bit. Oh, I have my pointing stick here as well, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can see with the screen here, it's a very different. You're going to have to bear with me, please, because we can't sort of see where we're going today. Can I, if I do this? Yeah. Do you mind Joe passing some hand sanitizer? Because no, I do appreciate we're both touching the same thing, so yep. we didn't want to be nice and clean. And we'll do that. It is just very difficult to try to think the best way to get around to it. So we'll have a little look. Can you see that okay? We okay? Oh, no, That's that was it. better. Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Jeff. Jeff. Let's just pop some on there and some for you. Thank you. There we are. Let's get that in. Oops, I'm losing my little stick here. I so. love the smell of this one. Oh no. Oh don't you? Oh, oh no, not at all. Mm. It's good. So. I don't know, you could <laughs> sniff it for a while. We'd all feel very happy, I think, smelling <laughs> that. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Mm. It's quite strong stuff, that one. <laughs> so, oh dear. Right, so again, we kind of, all the machines thread the same. We'll look at the 680 for threading them. I think it would be easier. Okay. Um, and again, you've got the free arm on all the machines 
here. So this comes off. We've also got the large table, which just slides on with the legs here. I think the big differences are, is the throat space. There's nine lights on here. And you've also got things on this like automatic foot lift. Okay. You've got a, a very different screen. Um, and you've got sewing applications as well, which are really, really handy to use. So that's a really nice one. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get around to, to get to the screen. <laughs> Having one we're of those mornings, aren't we? In here, <laughs> trying to be a part as well. We're trying to, yeah. So, say with the screen. Oh, we can catch onto the screen. We can get down there. Hang on. We, we're coming. We're, we're we'll coming. get there eventually. We'll get there. There we go. So, as you can see, I'm going to try and see if I can get there. <laughs> so, you've got the different icons on the top on here. Whoops. So, I'm going to go. I'm not used to working back to front. Is the trouble. Do you know what? How about I disappear off a minute? You disappear off, and if we swap sides... I've got myself a cup of coffee. I'll climb around here. So you come round here. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you do have any questions... Don't ask the question, what on earth are you doing? Um, yeah. But if you do have any questions That's for Jane, no, you can, can email, you can come yeah. through on Facebook as well. Yeah. So let's pop this are you up. There? I'm here now. There right. we go. So you've got all the features that we use. Ooh, that was me, sorry. <laughs> I'm out of the way. <laughs> It's going to be one okay. of those mornings, isn't it? <laughs> there we go. It's all under control again now, <laughs> as much as it's ever going to get. So, again, on this one, we have got, and I can't reach it now, we've got the extendable <laughs> light, back again. which I'll do it in a minute. We've got the extendable light on here. Um, you've also got all the standard features that you use to on all the Elner's machines. So we've got the automatic cut, needle up down, lock stitch, manual reverse, and we can sew with or without... The, um, the foot controlling. The nice thing on these, you've got the auto foot lift, with that one. So you don't, you can do it manually if you want to, which is quite nice sometimes. But if you want that feature activated, we just pop onto the screen in a minute. And it's this little icon here. And you can see it's active. So it will automatically, every time we stop sewing, we'll automatically pop the needle in and lift the foot up. For, and it's really handy for pivoting if you've got a really big project underneath. It personalises the machine, doesn't it? Does, it does, yes. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, we've got... Let's get rid of those. Um, so it, it say it is... <laughs> it's just working through. So the, the big differences with this are the extra stitches. We've also got things on here like sewing applications. So it's for it's like having an inbuilt like tutorial really on the machine when you're yeah. using it. So you've got putting your zips in. So are we going to pop in a concealed zip or a lap zip? And it talks you through every step. It's not going to let me do that for some reason. Um, it, it thinks it's got a different needle plate on today. So we'll have a little look oh, at that in a right, minute. Because yeah. you do get extra plates. You get it, extra needle plates with it, which are in that box there. <laughs> <laughs> So you've got the standard needle plate that you get with all the machines. You've also got the straight stitch needle plate, which comes with six H as well. But on these, you've got the HP foot as well. Um, and the needle plate, it's a single hole needle plate. So it's got a little HP foot and it's absolutely brilliant for straight stitching. Yeah. It's really good. For, I find it gives me quite a scant quarter of an inch, but we all sew slightly differently. So that's one of the reasons that we do that. Um, and again, with these, you can go into settings so you can really personalise the machine to how you want it to be. So you've got your common settings, so we can alter the screen contrast, volume. We can have inches or millimetres. We can pop through one here. Um, you don't need to. You've also got a USB port on the side of this one, right. and you get some software with this machine called Stitch Composer, which is a DVD. So you can actually create your own stitches. Um, and because it's a nine millimeter stitch width, it does give you quite a bit of scope to do that. So that does make a, it's something to sort of look at when you're using the machine. So again, thread sensors are on. So if the thread snaps, it automatically stops and tells oh, you that I you like need to re-thread. Yeah. And again, it will tell you if the bobbin's running low. Yeah. You get the sensor coming on on there. You can also personalize the machine settings quite a lot. I very seldom have to move the tension. It's automatic. It resets it for each yeah. stitch. Remaining bobbin thread, when you get the machines, they're all set at two. You can see under here, we've got like a little dot. They're all set at two. I find that's quite a lot of thread on there for me. So I've always popped mine down to 0.5. And there's about a foot left on there, 12, okay. 18 inches. So it's not a lot of thread left on there. And the machine will come up and tell you, and then you have to stop and change the bobbin. It won't let you sew without doing that. Right. 
So needle stop position, I usually have it set to stop down in the work all the time. You can have it set so it comes up. Um, adjustable start up speed, so you can do it with separately for the stop start and the foot pedal. So we can start off really slowly and then build up the speed or start up a little bit faster. So it's purely personal preference. We, so now, at, at this point, you haven't cut into any fabric, you haven't used any fabric. No. Th this is purely kind of getting to know your machine. It isn't is, it? and just having a little look, you know, get the manual out and have a little look through all the different features. Set the basic features on something like this to how you normally sew. Yeah. Say, I always use inches and things like that. So set those and then just have a little play, you know, make a shopping bag or something just to get used to everything yeah. and how it works. The auto foot lift is brilliant. I'm so used to that now. You do get rather spoiled when you put these machines. It's just little things like that, and it's just say familiarising yourself with the machine yeah. and how we change the stitches. It's it's slightly different to the six eighty plus with the screen wise. So we're going to go through here now. Thread cut after auto lock. You know, we can pop that on. So every time you lock the lock the machine off, it will automatically cut for you and lift up. I might get in my hand. I need to watch that, don't I? I'm putting my hand no, in the, the front of the, the monitor. The, there's a bit of noise going on in our ears at Is the there? moment. That's oh. <laughs> I think they're moving, they're moving furniture, furniture next door. In, during, as during long makeup. as it's not thundering again, we'll be fine. The resume mode as well, it's really handy. If you switch that on, so we've all done it, done project, you've set your stitches to what you want, you switch it off, go and have a cup of tea and come back and think, I've forgotten what it was. Yeah. If you've got resume mode on, every time you switch the machine on, it will ask you. If you want to go back to the last stitch that you were actually sewing with, and if you say yes, it will take you back to exactly where you were. That is, that so is such a good so idea. handy. You've also got favourite stitch on this machine, so you can actually alter the default settings. It's usually I use that for a plea case. If I've got some blanket stitch, something like that, and I've set it for a particular project, you can then alter it on the machine. So every time you switch the machine on, it automatically defaults back right. to your setting. And then when you finish your project, you can just go back to the normal settings. You know, this machine is so absolutely just lot on feature packed. It. Yes, um, we could do the hour for each of them, really, we couldn't could. we? But if you wanted to order this one again, it's one thousand nine hundred and ninety nine pounds. That is a lower price. Well, it was two thousand seven hundred and something previously. So you've got an amazing price for this one. If you want to order it, so eight hundred double zero one double four double three, or you can go to the website on sewingstreet.com. And again, if you do have questions, we're going to move on to the six eighty in just a second. But if you still have any questions that you want to ask for this one, then drop us an email to studio at sewingstreet.com. Or you can go to our Facebook page, which is the Sewing Street Facebook page. That will get you an, an instant answer. Um, however, if you, um, if you do put a message on Facebook after the show, maybe you're watching on YouTube later on, you're not live anymore, then still ask the question, still come through, and somebody will be picking up on your questions and bring you an appropriate answer. <laughs> oh, if they're new, Jane... If they knew the dosy doing that we do in the studio. Oh, I know. If only they could see the glamour that we have. <laughs> <laughs> do you think we did mention with this as well? You get a fabulous accessory box with it. So oh, it stores it. all your feet and accessories. It's a lift out tray. And you've also got a vast range of feet in there, including our ruler work foot. So if you've got quilting rulers, then you've got the ruler work foot with the machine. Oh, okay. So you can use that. Fabulous. And that's all included. That's all included. With an extension yeah. table as well. Yeah. Extension table okay. and the semi rigid cover. Should I pop that lid down now? Lovely. Oh, okay. the light. We didn't get to do the light because I couldn't reach it. So the light just pops out like so. Oh, I like that. And that is so clear as well. Yeah. <laughs> They're confusing now. He's got to dip back to it. <laughs> <laughs> right. So uh, our 6 8. This the is the, six, eight, the machine of choice from It um, is. From so Gossip many people I see out and about they go, oh, I've got the 6 8. I absolutely love it. And it's a lovely sewing machine. It really is. Again, we've got the 9mm stitch width on it. Right. Um, you have got a slightly longer throat space than your normal machines. And it comes again with a soft cover, the extension table, the knee lift. Um, you've got your book here. Oh, construction manual. And they are very comprehensive, the um, Elm construction manuals, Elm construction instructions. <laughs> <laughs> they just literally will flick through so you can. I, I think it. It can be a little off-putting when you have a, a very comprehensive manual, but actually this is really simple to understand, isn't it? They're great to understand, and I love it. They've got simple line drawings. There's no photographs. I find sometimes photographs in instruction books don't show it very yes. clearly. Yeah. Um, but again, just get the manual out, work through it bit by bit, and just do something basic to get used to the machine when you first get it. It's okay. the best way to go with it. 
So again, so I'm going to switch us on here. So again, we've got all lovely extra lighting on these. So you've got all the LED lighting, so it's really clear right on here. We've got the manual foot lift, okay, which works up. And you will find on all your Elner machines, you, they've all got the extra high foot lift, even like the 570s, 560s. So if you press the foot lift, it's quite stiff when they're new, but press it a little bit high and it lifts it up a little bit more, yeah. which is great if you've got a heavy project to get underneath. Or, oh, you know when you're putting zips in? Yes. And you need to get the zip pull out of the way? Yeah. That, yeah. That's why I like so really really don't put many zips in, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So, again, we've got the lift-up lid here with all our stitches in it. And we've also got on these, and I love these, it's a little, which way are we going up on this one? That one. It's almost like a little wardrobe to keep the feet in. <laughs> and that's... Like they're, a wardrobe for your feet. Yeah, and they're all, and you can just pop them forward for easy access as well. So yeah, it's just I, such I like a nice that. feature. You know where they all are. They've yeah. all got the numbers on there, the letters, so that when you set the machine, it goes use foot M. You know which foot M is automatically. It's got a picture and the letter on there. So that's a lovely feature on these. And again, we've still got the usual features. So we've got the automatic cut, speed control, needle up and down, lock stitch. Everything like that. So it's all with us. Again, extension table, which com comes with it. So it slides off to free arm. And and really nice thing with these as well that we don't always seem to do. They will all lock out. So if I press that, it's locked that machine. So nothing now will work on it. Oh, that's handy. It's a really good safety feature. So if you've got small children or pets even, yeah, just lock it out when you walk away. So it's a nice safety. So I'm going to lift the foot up. And it's a really, really, should I pop these out of the way for us? So and just while you're doing that, just to let you know that 30% of the new stock of the embellishes are sold out. Just, just saying. Have a look on the website. You're not keeping mine. I'm taking it back home with me. <laughs> yeah, we, we could flog that. You could. <laughs> so needle plate, easy, really easy change now. There's a little switch here. And it's the same on both the machines. I always lift the foot up a little bit. And you just press it and it pops out. That's so much easier than unscrew. When, when I unscrew um, a needle plate, I'm so worried about losing those screws because yeah. you don't get I always sort of put them somewhere really safe so you can, no, don't lose them. Yeah. And it's also really easy to clean it as well then. It's yes. much quicker so it, you're more inclined to clean it more yeah. often. And to pop it back in, it goes in. I just pop that down this way. Set an angle and good firm press. You have to be quite firm pressing it down and you'll just hear it click back in again. Okay. So that goes in there and then we can unlock the machine. Um, so your stitch selection on these, we're in mode one at the moment. They're all on here. Everything will show you on here. So we've got mode one, which is all classed as basic utility stitches, buttonholes. We've got some nice applique. We've got satin stitches and just a few bits of other bits and pieces in there. On these, a lot of these, you'll also see the little dotted square on a lot of the machines. That is a space. So if you're putting a stitch sequence together and you want to leave a space, you can. And also a little lock stitch, so you can add a lock stitch onto the end of a sequence if you want to. Okay. Which is great when you're combining stitches. Um, again, mode two, I would use most of these for quilting, to be honest, all the top line definitely. It's got that lovely serpentine stitch, which is brilliant for filling in long borders and things. If you're not confident, yes. you're going to go totally straight. Um, just lots and lots of different bit of crazy quilting. We've got some nice decoratives on here as well. You've got two alphabets, so you've got seven mil upper and lower case and nine mil on the bottom here, which is just the upper case only, but they've all got the numbers in there as well. They're really easy to combine as put stitches together. Screen is slot very different to that one, but still very easy to work your way around. Say so we've looked at the um, the lockout, and again we can set, we can do some basic settings on here. So twin needle safety as well. So that um that applies to the twin needle that comes in the needle pack, which is two mil one. Right. So twin needle, if you pop it on, sometimes it will decrease the stitch width, so it works with that particular stitch, other times it won't. Right. So but if you're using different ones, I would always recommend winding it through a full stitch rotation just to be on the safe side if it's not the two mil one um what else have we got in here start over that's a really really handy function especially if you're using decorative stitch and you come to pivot and turn a corner and we've all done you think right where am i going now yeah. where's it going so if you press this little button here um it's on quite a few machines it will automatically take you back to the beginning of the stitch oh right so you know exactly where you're going it's quite handy for doing with applique as well 
that's another handy one. You can mirror image and we've also got this stitch elongation for the satin stitches. So there's just so many features on this machine. So mode one, so if I want to go into mode two, I literally just touch mode and I'm into mode two and it always defaults to the first stitch in that section. If I, the little icon here, you've got the lock stitch and the scissors, so if I pop that on, the little scissors are now on the screen. So every time I press the lock stitch button, it's automatically going to cop for me. So it just saves. I mean, to even press the scissors. Okay. Um, width and length, we can do that while you're sewing as well. So you can do those. Just takes it back. It's quite easy to do. If you want to combine stitches on these, let me have a little look where we are. So we will put the little car and the little helicopter, I think. So we literally just key in. 80, memory, and you can see that's gone, I've got a flashing line there, 81, memory. So now I've keyed that in so it will continually save that as a new pattern for me. Can you save the patterns as well? You can't save them on this machine now, right. but you can on oh, okay. that machine, so there are differences that way and that puts the patterns together slightly differently as well. Right. It's very easy. Um, so you can, if you just want to do that, like the once, each you can just pop the lock stitch on again so that's number 87 and memory and that will now sew those two patterns for you and then lock off so it's quite straightforward to use it's so and easy it isn't it gives you so many variations that you can do with the stitches that you've got as well okay masses of them you know when we um when you look on the website or a hmm. lot of the times when we bring you new elmer sewing machines we have genomi accessories yeah what's the relationship between the two what's the right. history there they do genomi have been making elmer machines since 2004 all oh, right. So they're interchangeable across, yeah. So it, it is the same company? In, yeah, in, yeah in we make the Elmer machines, oh, right. yeah. Um, so everything comes with a two-year warranty, doesn't everything's it? Everything's got well? the two-year warranty with it as well. And yeah. you're British-based? Yes, we're based up in Stockport. In Stockport. And, and I like that. I know it's, I think it's mm -hmm. important to mention because you're spending a lot of money on a sewing machine. It's nice to have that support. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, if you if you do have any issues, mm. you've got a question that need answering, you want yeah. a service or the, a bit's missing, I don't know, you don't have to wait for something to come no. from another country. You've got customer service yeah. there or some queries, it depends what they are. Sometimes they'll flag them straight through to me at home. Oh, okay. Yeah. So there's always it's, somebody it's available a huge piece to help of you out. Though, isn't yes, it? Yeah. yeah. To know that, say, we're British based, so it is. Okay. Really nice to know. And you've that. been there a long time as well. This isn't a new company, is it? No. Um, well, Elna itself, I say I was doing a little bit of research earlier. All oh, right. Um, the first Elna machines came off the production line as a, as a more, not mass produced totally then, but in 1940. So that's 80 years ago. Oh, wow. And it was called very originally it. the Elna One. <laughs> <laughs> or affectionately known as a grasshopper because it was a lovely uh, shade of green. Oh, yeah. oh, I'd love to see that. Yeah. Are there pictures on There's them, pictures of it. If you just Google it on the website, yeah. there are a lot of pictures on it. And also, um, Elna were the first domestic machine with a reverse facility on it. Oh, as really? Well. Yeah. They were. Yeah. And again, most of you are familiar with the little Lotus. Yes. I think I brought mine in when we were doing did some you? of the other. I did, yes. And put it on the shelf and took it home again. Um, they were produced for, from 1968. And they've actually got one in the Muse uh, New York Museum of Modern Art as a permanent feature. It was a little one. Um, mine is a metal one. It's quite tiny. And all the sides come down like a lotus flower. Yeah. We did have someone here a while ago, didn't we, the newer versions? Yes. Yeah. So they really are a well-established old company. They're still Swiss-based. Oh, are they? So, yeah, even though we make the machines for them, it still is a standalone company. So, yeah. Oh. They've been there. And my <laughs> machine at home, my big machine at home is an Elna, which is... is it? It's my Colton Queen, which is a bit like the 6600, which is, I know, your machine, got, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah, it's the Elna version of that. Oh. So and I've had that for many years. Do you know, I, I feel quite unfaithful to my machine when we bring you these amazing ones. Yeah. But um, they I, are. I love it. They I, are, I, I they're great, the yeah. And I mean, I'm lucky because I get to use all the big machines at home anyway. So, and they're all absolutely fabulous. There's so many features on them. You get yeah. quite spoiled yeah. in the end. And importantly, it's the build quality as well. Yes. Uh, my genome is so quiet and it's so smooth. Mm. It doesn't, although it's a, a weighty, very quick machine, mm -hmm. it doesn't shake around the table. No, I don't. No, no, it's, no it's like I don't. it's like the the sports car yes. of the sewing machine yeah, world. Yeah, they it? are. They are mm. fabulous, and they've all got like a metal subframe as well. So they are well built machines. Yeah. So as we said, you can interchange the genome feet and accessories. Just make sure if you've got one of these that you are buying the nine mil. I don't know if I've got one here somewhere. It will say 9mm on the packet when you buy spares and accessories. Oh, okay. Bobbins are all the same in the needles. It's just they're a different width. 
Right. The needle swing is okay. different, so yeah. Should we yeah. see it in action then? Should we? I have got yeah. some, I did pop some bits in here. I need to, we've actually just got some beige on here, I think, haven't we? And I think with, with these machines as well, um, yes, if you're a beginner, they, they are actually very simple to use. I don't know if as a beginner you would want to spend that amount of money mm. on something. But if you are quite new to sewing, um, you don't know where that journey is going to go. You could be a quilter, you could be a dressmaker, it could be home wise, it could be repair, it could be all of the mm. above. You've got a machine that will follow you on your journey. You've, there's a lot to grow into. I always say to people, um, you know, buy the best you can afford with quite a few features on it, then you've got room to grow with the machine. Yeah. I've seen so many people who've just bought a basic one, yeah. thinking that'll do everything I want, and within sort of three months, yeah. they've grown out of it. You might just want something like the Pi 50, and that's all you're ever going to use. But sort of if you think I'm going to grow on this journey and expand, yes. then just have a look. Or equally, a lot of people may have like something like a 550, 560 and think, right, I want that for a workshop machine when we ever have workshops again. <laughs> and I want a big machine to keep at home. And that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So your bobbins and needles, you can interchange. The feet, you can't because they're a seven and a nine mil machine. Right. Okay. That's a big difference on them. So, right. So I'm going to actually, I'm going to take these off. So I'm going to go back into, oh, let me just come back onto here again. Oh, where am I going now? Oh, do you know what? I'm just going to actually go turn this down. Every time I come in here, everybody's got these on full speed for some reason. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> we should actually have the satin stitch foot on here as well. So, but I'm just going to go. That. So that will now, maybe a little faster than that. So that's just going to do my little helicopter, my little car, and then it will stop for me. You can hear how smooth it's that so is. Quite, you can still hear yourself talking over yes, it, can't you? It's yeah. awesome. clonk, clonk, clonk. There's no it's, vibration, it's there's humming. nothing with it, yeah. And they've got lovely feed on it, so you get a really nice quality feed, so it feeds the work through straight. Yeah. You still obviously have to guide it to a degree, but it's, um, it's not. So I don't think we can see that because it's beige cotton on white felt. <laughs> so, right, where are we going to go to now? I'm just miles away here today. Um, I'm going to go back to a straight stitch. There we go. So I'm back on a straight stitch. These little buttons on the bottom here are great because you saw then, if I've done some decorative sewing or some applique and I want to go back to a straight stitch, I literally just press the straight stitch and it'll take me back. It will take me to a left needle position, zigzag or a standard buttonhole. So even if I'm in a different mode, yes, it will take it automatically back to take you straight back. So it's a quick way to do it. And again, I think we've got 91 different needle positions. 91? Yeah. The straight stitch you can move. There's no width on a straight stitch, so we can move it in one mil increments. So it will go from nine mil right down to zero. All so right. we can do that. So again, take it. And it's great. Say I'm a quilter, so sometimes you might just want to tweak your seams even one mil. Yeah. And you can do that with a machine, so that's a really, really nice feature on it. And again, the length, you can alter it to what you want, to what you're happy with using. Then when you've done that and you want to go back, just press that and it will automatically default back for you. There's just so many features on this. I say it's just a nice machine to just do something basic with at first, yeah. to get used to all the different bits. And then the world is your oyster when you get I, going I with them. I suggest as well that you, you stitch out the stitches. Yeah. Because they can look different to obviously yes. the drawing of what the yeah. stitch is like. So you get an idea of the size of it and mm -hmm. exactly what it's going yeah. to look like. Yeah, and keep, again, a little folder. Yeah. Keep yourself a little book with notes on what went. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. But just put a little note why. Yes. And then next time you come to do it, hopefully you won't do the same again. But we've all done it twice, at least, haven't we, on these. Um, and again, with the 9mm stitch, which that doesn't make a massive difference. I'm going to try and see if I've got some, I've got some coloured thread in here. And just pop. They're definitely having their after show champagne party oh, at jewellery maker next door. So if, if you're hearing a little bit of cheering going on and party poppers and things, it's just, it's just them at jewellery. They do that every day. They didn't invite us, did they? No, I know. We'll be gone by now. Finish by the time we've finished. <laughs> so I'm just going to pop this on. Okay. If you've got any messages, by the way, do come through. Pop these on. So um, on Facebook see. or on. Uh, let me just check my Facebook. See if you're still there. Um, or on um, by email, studio at sewingstreet.com. Just pop round here. I wish Facebook was quicker. You have to go all around the trees and houses to get there. I'm going to have to pop round here to thread while you're just talking amongst yourselves. Oh, um, oh thank you for your pictures, to, uh, Caroline. Hi, Caroline. I just watched your tutorial and made a wall organiser. Lovely. Um, 
Terror uh, ter is a secret convent. Convent? Convert. <laughs> I, just, I have had my eyes tested, <laughs> waiting for new glasses, honestly. All the threads gone out of my eyes and everything. Um, I'm a recent convert to sewing and bag making especially. No wonder I found you then. Um, oh, thank you very much. Oh, I'll answer that later on if you don't mind. Um, oh, yeah, okay, then yes, that is my daughter. <laughs> and and thank, thank you very much. Oh, morning, Alan. He's finished his um, Pride of Lion patchwork. Fabulous. But again, if you've got any questions about the machines, come and ask them. Yep, so let's pop that down. Hopefully now we have got a different coloured thread, so I'm going to pop the needle in and we can just start sewing. There we go, yeah. Lock stitch, that's better. We can see the stitches now on the white. <laughs> the things we put out Best laid plans. <laughs> when you get the machine home, don't try sewing from the back. You get no. a lot better performance <laughs> yeah. and results if mm. you sew sitting down at the machine. It is much easier to sew looking at it. It, yeah. it is, than isn't trying it? to go backwards. But, but thank you. <laughs> that's quite all right, especially since I'm not used to doing the mirror image on the yeah. camera. It gets interesting at times. Right, so where were we? Right, so again with these, one of the lovely features on these that I do like is this elongation feature. It only works with satin stitches, so I'm going to pop back, we're in mode one now, so I'm going to pop in stitch number 77. And that's a satin stitch, so again if I start sewing, if you only want one pattern repeat, just press the lock stitch when you start and it will automatically do one pattern repeat for you. Oh that's good, so if, you, if you're making a border you're not going to Borders or if I do book covers and things and you just want to fill little gaps in with a decorative yeah. stitch, just pop one stitch in and do this. And then on here now we've got elongation, so that's coming up length one. Oh no, hang on a minute, I'm going upside down again, there we go. So if I'm going to length two now, so again, press that one, press that. It will elongate up to five times the original length. And it, it'll fill in the gaps, won't it? So it just doesn't yeah, stretch it doesn't stitch. stretch it. I'm going to pop the satin stitch bottom on in a minute. So okay. that's what we need for the heavier stitches. All right, okay. And I'll tell you why when I get it out. All right. When we've done the satin stitch, can we do the circular one? Uh, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> got a circular foot on the show. Now normally those are really really busy. Um, if you missed out before have a look on the website but you yeah. can be amazed at what this foot can do. So again we've got this is standard length and then that's just elongated twice. All right okay. So you can go up to five times. These look absolutely fabulous with variegated threads. Oh that would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like a variegated thread? And it's just an extra feature so you could build up your design. Yeah. And do normal size. And then the next size up, then back to a normal size, or just whichever way you want to go. So we're going to have the circular stitcher, are we? All right, go on. And you've been dying right. to get onto that. Okay. Circular stitcher. I did bring mine with me somewhere. Here we go. Right, with your circular stitcher, um, you know we normally say these are a nine millimeter stitch width. So to make sure you get the feet with the circular stitchers, it actually is on the cover for the bobbin okay. case. I think most of the machines that we sell, sell on sewing street will have the easy set bobbin right okay so as long as they've got that then this is your circular attachment so this you. doesn't come with the machine this no, is an extra this is an extra it's right got my name on it so nobody keeps it <laughs> but if you've got the um the 560 the 570 the, they've got the easy it. so long as they've got the easy set bobbin here which i'm right. certain they have then this is the one for it yeah okay i just go in there slightly differently and i'm going to have to go around the front probably to pop this on so you literally just take Do you it want Turn the machine around. Am I allowed to turn it around? Yeah. Will I get told off? No. <laughs> so this literally, you take the bobbin case out, the cover here, and it literally sits in, into there. The nice thing with this one as well, they're slightly different. Some of them just clip in, another one, this one has got a little screw. So right. It's very, very secure. And I've somewhere got my little screwdriver in here. So carefully you don't use the screw, you're going to need that. Yeah. And again, I always keep the little bag and it gets popped back in its case when it's finished. There's a little hole on the plate here. And don't forget as well, the um, Elmers do have that circular pivot pin yes. in them, yeah. which is it's great, but you you can only do the two different size circles with it. Okay. So Whereas this one gives you a lot of scope. You can go from sort of like two inches, two and a half inches up to about ten. Okay. That's great. But before we get going, can we just have a look at what, what this is going to do? Just so this is going to do, did I... I have, here's some I made earlier. I've got some little coasters. Some of you have probably seen these before. You can see those. Can you see them? I want to come up with those. They're so really... even the satin stitch around the edge you can do? Yes. Oh, okay. I trimmed, trimmed them back 
Uh, I put this on last um, and just did a straight stitch after I've done the decorative. Then I straight stitch around the outside, trimmed it back, popped it back in the centre hole again, and then just set the zigzag All right. to hide the raw edges. It's really, really oops, been attacked by this. It's really it's one of those sort of little projects that Sunday afternoon you're thinking, oh, I wonder what happens if. Um, the other one which I think I've probably brought this in with me before. I should have had this the other week for you, shouldn't I? The lovely Christmas table runner. Oh, yes. Which, again, is all done on the circular. Even these are. Oh, are they? Like yep. um, scallop shapes? Yep. You just literally move... Oh, excuse me. I'm just throwing everything on the floor. You literally just move the pivot pin. Oh, And just okay. have a little plate and then a little bit of quilting rulers in the corner just to hold it all together. Oh. So with the, what I would say, if you're doing something like these with the decoratives, stitches make sure that when you start your next round you actually move the machine on so you're not starting and finishing in the same yeah. place otherwise your eye will automatically go to that it tends not to be perfect okay when you get to the end but something like this you can't see where they are unless you really look because i've moved everything round if you'd have done it the same you'd have had a whole yeah row across where isn't perfect but it's a quick and easy project i've actually got something else in the pipeline with the circular at the moment oh, yeah. but I, haven't, I have but i haven't had time to finish it yet and again, just a quick little sample that I did ages ago with the cross stitch on one of the machines and again, variegated threads. Yes, that looks lovely. So there's just so many different things you can do with it. And again, this is one of the samples from the office, circular attachment. That's appliqued on. Oh, right. So again, you can lay your fabric down, straight stitch, trim it back and then satin stitch around it again. What a nice gift that would make, wouldn't it? It would. Mm -hmm. But it's mine, this one. <laughs> Um, no. We're just getting questions about which machines these are actually going to fit. Can you show us that diagram on the, the back? Diagram the diagram on the back again, again is, where have I popped that to? I've got far, oh, I'll take this one of yours here. It's the Easy Set Bobbins. Right. So if your machine's got the Easy Set Bobbin, looks like this. We do do them, there's another two as well for different machines. Right. So you need to look, one of them is where you've just got the cover like that and the other one has got a shaped cover on it. Okay, but this so is the one that fits this is the, the one that fits that the sell, machines yeah. that we've got here, yeah. Right, okay. But say so there are other ones available for different machines, but they are designed for the Genomi and Elna machines. So if you've got a different brand, it probably won't work. Okay. Okay. But they are they're one of those things that once you start it's a bit like the embellisher. Yeah. And you could technically <laughs> you could do the embellisher, cut some circles out yes. and um, stitch around it, couldn't you? So, right. Oh, so you've right. fixed it on, you've screwed it down. I've screwed it down. I'm now going to get my fabric out here. Let me just move this. I'm going to have to. I'm going to try and move it around a little bit, but it's quite difficult. If you look here, you can see there's a little pin there with a cover. It is very sharp. It is very sharp. So make sure you keep the cover on it all the time. I actually do want to pop the satin stitch foot on it as well. The reason satin stitch foot we use a lot, and it's all, all the decoratives will have the F foot listed here, it's got like a little indent underneath, so it allows all those heavy stitches to run through freely. Right. Especially alphabets, things like that, you get much better finished stitch using the satin stitch foot. Foot drops off. Put that one up there. And then it pops back on again. There's different ways of doing it. There we go. So again, pin here, there's a little slider here. And that actually allows you to slide the oh, guide so that on there. The size of yeah, your so that's, it's marked on here in inches and centimetres, so you can actually set it. There's a little arrow as well, so you can actually set it. So I'm going to go something about here. Make sure that when you've set it, you press that back across. Right. Because it fit. Oh, hang on a minute. That's better. It fixes it in place. If you don't, as you're sewing, your circle will end up as a spiral. Oh, okay. And how do I know that? <laughs> I think we all do things. Hopefully, we only do them once. Um, the beauty of this is because you're not physically altering how the machine basically works, you can use any of the stitches on it. Oh, okay. Yeah, the table runner is quilted, um, and I use to do all the straight stitches. I put the walking foot on, yeah, and quilted all the straight stitches. Okay. So it's really nice one to do. So say we're not actually altering how the machine sews. We're just altering how it moves it. So I'm going to pop that one in there. Pop that in there. And we'll pop the presser foot down. And I think we'll choose a stitch. I don't want anything that's too complicated because it'll take too long to do for us. Um, 58 will be quite nice in mode two. So I'm going to go mode two, 58. 
needle in and off we go so you could in effect um put letters in here as well you could that. and i've seen it where you can arc it you don't have to do it the whole way around you could just oh. do a partial circle like happy birthday or happy christmas or put names in and then you know, there are lots of different ways that you can do things and again if you notice with these i've got it's just a felt i use but you must always stabilize your fabric right. when you're doing things and even if you're using a de decorative stitch normally make sure you stabilize your fabric so it supports it really well and you get a good quality stitch okay. at the end of it you know occasionally i get people going oh it's not worked and they've just put like some patchwork fabric underneath it with no backing and it won't hold the stitches very well right it's not designed to be on a single layer so it will speed it up a little bit um, just to let you know, um, the 780 has been really popular in the show as well. Remember, we do have the both of the machines. The 780 has got a huge discount on it. So again, have a look on, uh, on the website. Um, and again, this fits across onto the 780 as well, if you wanted to. Yes. It's a nice add on this. It's one that I do use quite a lot. Yeah. So, so you do have a whole selection of um, feet that are included with both machines as well. So things that you would expect and things that you, you may not expect. No. So. Well, they've both got, this has got the convertible quilting foot with it. Oh, yes. So, which is brilliant for free motion quilting. And that machine, it's got the free motion quilting feet, but they fit on slightly differently. I think we have done those before. And I'm coming to the end. Just, if you just slow down, and then hopefully, as you're getting close. I would normally, if I was doing a project, I would lift the needle up, pull it out, cut the threads and then tie it through on the back right. so it's secure. So then we come up and we take it out and we have our lovely circle. Oh that matched really well on the that end. That has done hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Perfect. We did that by design. <laughs> <laughs> and then again if I want to pop another stitch a little bit further out I can slide it along, pop it back under. I tend to put a little bit of masking tape or something underneath the back of the fabric for a bit more support. And then we'll pop that back under and we will then, if I can see this very well from this angle, it's not too bad, there we go, pop it back on and we could just do something, we'll just pop it onto a zigzag this time for speed and again off it goes. Again it's creating something that's fun to do but unique to you as it well. It is and if I, I know when I first saw that in the packet I'm thinking oh what's that going to yeah. do? But once you start using it, there's just got so many different uses. Reverse yeah. applique is fabulous with it. Yes, that would be the thing. Really, really easy yeah. to do. And again, just purely decorative. You could just decorate a whole piece of fabric, something along these lines, and then cut it up and reuse it. Yes. And something. There's just loads and loads of different ways of using these. Well, we need so much more than an hour for these machines. We do. Know. And again, just cut that. And you can see it's just done. Circle for me there. That's perfect. They are so, they're so much fun, these as well. Yeah. There's so many different things you can do with them. <laughs> and saying because you're fundamentally not changing how the machine sews, you can use a different feet with it, yeah. you can use a different stitches with it. Could you just pick that one up again for us? Oh, has so it collapsed? Have a close look. Yeah, there we go. And so that, it's just, you know, like the little table mats. That yeah. was just a, I'm thinking, oh, what would happen if? Yeah. And you get little table mats. So the, these are probably extra reasons. You, I wouldn't buy a sewing machine to do that, but it's one of those things that when you've got it and then you can go for the attachments, yeah. it's, it, you're never going to be bored. So no, you. definitely not. No, no. There's mm -hmm. just so much that you can do with them. Um, so that's the, the circular sewing device. Yeah. It's £49. So it doesn't come with any of the machines. That's an extra. But it will go with any of the Janome, uh, sorry, the Elm machines yeah. that we have for with you. The easy set bobbins on them. Yeah. Um, so this is the 680. Um, your price there is £1,099. You have a two year warranty from Elna. Um, but the nice thing is, you, you've got a support group there as well. Or you, you, have, you have somebody there that can answer a question if you need to. You're not on your own. You know, Elna don't go, look, you've got your machine off, you go, I don't want to hear yeah. from you again. And I think it's nice to have that, that peace of mind when you're spending a large amount of money. But I can't see with either of the machines, to be honest, Jane, why you'd want to replace one. 
There, there's it's little lovely. bits and bobs. So I've got the Genoma 6, uh, 600, which I love. And then I see the 780 and I see the 680. And there's little things that mine hasn't got, but yeah. I can't justify buying a new one. No. And I think it's the same with these. That it's, there'll be other machines that have a bit of something else going on. I, I can't think what. They're all slightly the different. Right, now where have I put that? This is what, what you, you do. You always put your um, cover somewhere safe. Oh. It will be here somewhere. It's just we've got so much stuff everywhere. Mine normally slips underneath. Well, I maybe. haven't lost it, honestly. It's just temporarily <laughs> misplaced. Um, oh, with a 780, you're making a saving of over £600 if you go do for know, that I'm one gonna right now. I'm going to pinch that one and find it in a minute. <laughs> they might let me you're come back. You're not going home till we find it. Let, there, they though. might let me come back again. <laughs> there again, they might not. So, um, yeah, it is. Um, there's just so many different things that you can do with the machines once you start looking at, you know. The, and it's are, experimenting, it's just yes. thinking outside the box sometimes. And, and we really do need, yeah. we need a sewing day, don't we? We do. It doesn't matter that jewellery maker are here for the rest of the afternoon, they can have the day off. Let's have a sewing yeah, day. have a nice sewing day. Um, well, thank you very much. Do you know when you're back again? I don't know. No, I don't know when I'm back again. They haven't told me yet. So. Oh, well, we've got to have words then, haven't we? We will, Bring yeah. these amazing deals. Yeah. The least we can do is bring you one. Um, but thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, really I will morning. clean all thank this you. up before I go home, honestly. <laughs> yeah, <don't mind. laughs> um, meanwhile, let me, uh, or let Vicky explain to you how you can place your order um, or how you can get in touch with us. It's sewingstreet.com. Um, or you can order on 0800 001 4433. So you've got two ways to place your order. If you do need any more information, then come through to the call centre. If they can't answer your questions, then questions will again be passed on to, um, to, to Jane or to one of the team. But again, here's a reminder of how you can place your orders. Shopping with us couldn't be easier. If you want to shop online, then you can head to our website, www.sewingstreet.com. It will redirect you to our sister channel, Jewelry Makers landing page. Don't worry, you haven't gone to the wrong place. We're simply using their website temporarily while we're building our own web shop. Scroll down past the watch live part and you'll see all of the products that you will have seen on air on today's live show. You can also shop our catalog by clicking a category, clicking a product to view closer and adding it to your basket. Once you're ready to check out, you will need to create an account, which is absolutely free to do so, but it will mean that you can check out on as many orders as you want throughout the day with still only paying one postage and packaging. If you'd prefer to speak to somebody in our UK-based customer service team, then you can do so via the free telephone line number 0800 001 4433. They will not only help you create an account, but will also help you with any of your online shopping. So in the previous hour early on today, we sold out of every one of the brand new embellishers that Jane brought us. Um, have a look back if you wanted to see any details of that at the, um, the nine o'clock show this morning. We have restocked. It's not the same bundle. It's the same embellisher. You've got most of the same extras, but you don't get the DVDs that we're offering this morning. Um, but this embellisher will enable you to make amazing things like this. Using felt, using roving yarns, using scraps of fabric and ribbon and organzas and cottons and felts and whatever you've got in your stash and then some. This is achievable. This is something that you can make at home, maybe not to this scale to start with, but have a play, have a practice, because this machine is all about having fun. You're going to be able to create your own fabrics. You're going to, you're going to be a fabric manufacturer. You'll never throw any scraps away ever again. Um, and why would you want to? It looks a little bit like a sewing machine, but it's not. So there's no threads involved here. You have five needles inside here, which are barbed. So they have like, um, like bobbed wire. They've got like, indentations all the way down them, which makes them rough. So no thread to go through the needles because there's no eyes in them. And when you're using this, these needles go up and down so quickly, they're going to punch together and mesh together the layers of fabric that you put underneath there. So you may have seen the hand needle felting that Delphine Brooks brings us. This is a much quicker version of how to, uh, of felting. So it goes at this kind of speed. So you can do bigger projects and faster projects that will work very well alongside your, your hand needle felting. Um, but if that's a bit of an issue for you with your hands or anything like that, then this is going to be a great alternative for you. It's going so fast it's sending the camera funny. 
So you'll have a unit um, on the machine when you get it home that has five static needles. We're also offering you as part of this bundle the five individual needles so you can change those individually. You have a single needle, but by having five all together, that means that you can take one out and use four, you can take two out and use three. That's entirely up to you. And there are spare needles included in there as well. So you are getting an amazing deal. The extension table is included as well, and that's worth about 78 pounds just on its own. So what are you gonna make? How about using your scraps to make um, not just wall hangings, maybe a, a, a cushion cover, this could be clothing, maybe it's a waistcoat, it could be a, a scarf, you could embellish things that you already have. Um, it could be a mat for your, um, for your embellisher or for your sewing machine, it could be a dust cover. There are so many different uses, but the, the main thing is that you're having fun. You're painting with threads that you already have to create beautiful items, maybe like this. Um, so again, if you wanted to see the demonstration of that, have a look on YouTube later on this afternoon and take a look at the nine o'clock show this morning and Jane did a full demonstration on how to actually use this and I have lots and lots of ideas for you. And this little idea here, um, as an egg cosy, is actually on the Janome website so you'll have a tutorial as to how to do that. But then why not expand, why not make that bigger, why not make, or in fact even this kind of size, put it behind an aperture in a card and you've got a lovely little birthday card or a greetings card, put it behind a mount in a frame and you've got an exquisite unique piece of artwork that you've created all by yourself. Lots of different types of materials that you can use. This one is using yarn as in knitting yarn. Absolutely perfect no matter how thick or fine it is you can create some incredibly intricate detailing like for instance the highlight on the cherries here. So you could even draw onto your fabric and then um, kind of mould the thread or the yarn over the top so you get something really accurate. And just a few of Jane's bits that she was playing with last night. But just to show you different kinds of effects, in fact this was this morning. Um, so this was a piece of felting that she cut up and then put onto more felt. Always have a look on the back because the backs are sometimes nicer than the fronts. Have a look on YouTube for lots of different tutorials. Ideas and inspiration, take a look on Pinterest. There are so much interest, so many different techniques, so many different um, types of materials that you can use to create something unique. And the main thing is you're gonna have so much fun while you're making them. Um, right, so you can order now. Remember a third of the stock sold out and this is the back in stock stock. You will be seeing, uh, seeing repeats of this show and of course we're going to be on YouTube as well. Um, so there is a potential of selling out of the second lot of stock that we have in stock. So order now have a play with it, take advantage of all the bonuses that you're getting and, um, and have fun. So if you have this in your basket at the moment, please can you check out because it's not yours until you paid for it. Um, that sounded a bit harsh, didn't it? But it's true, if we get to the stage where we are selling out, then people can order on the phone lines and empty your basket. And it happens, so just to warn you. Now coming up tomorrow, we've got a special day tomorrow. It's our six month birthday. Um, so we're making zombie life for five hours. Uh, 8am 8, 8 is our happy six month birthday to Sewing Street. Oh, then when the champagne corks are going to be popped. At nine o'clock, it's block of the week five and six. At 10 o'clock, Jane Greenoff's here from the Cross Stitch Guild. Fabulous fabrics at 11 o'clock in the morning and at 12 o'clock midday is the Liberty May. And is that going to be live? I thought we were live for five hours tomorrow. Oh, okay, so 12 o'clock, we may or may not be live. That's going to be exciting. It may or may not be May, Liberty May fabrics. May or may, we don't know. So join us at 12. It might not even be us. It might be Jewelry Maker. <laughs> so we shall see what happens tomorrow, but we will be having a celebration. Um, there will be another sewing show after this hour. So if you're still in the mood for sewing, then do stay with us for the 12 o'clock show where we will be bringing you... Whatever was on at 11 o'clock yesterday. Oh, it was Wendy Orlando. <laughs> um, with a barley pop quilt. So a little bit of a quilting coming up in the next hour. So, And there'll be a demo of the early bird as well, which is still available from yesterday if you wanted to get hold of those clips today. Um, I shall see you bright again. Bright again? I don't know about that, but bright and early again for a silly Sunday morning. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. Enjoy the rest of your week. I'll see you Sunday. Bye-bye.